It's been a long time since I was able to enjoy myself at a party. It sure felt good. Now just one thing left to make this night even more perfect. I'm going to make my crush mine. There he is! Jad! O.M.G. Did he just glance at me? I could feel my heart flutter. As I immersed myself in a world with only Jad and me, the face of Harry the Metal Mouth suddenly popped up from nowhere. It's time for bed, mommy's little princess. What on earth was he saying? And why was everyone running toward the window like that? I jostled into the crowd and I peeked down. Oh, for heaven's sake! The beyond cringy woman standing there holding the speakerphone was none other than my mom! Janice, it's 10 p.m. You know it's your turn to stay with me tonight. I won't be able to sleep without you. God, is there any way for me to just evaporate right here, right now? This is too embarrassing. But wait, how did she know I was here? I immediately looked over at Christine. It must be her again. Everyone knew she had a huge crush on Jad too, and would do anything to get him. She's definitely the snitch. <sighs> it's so frustrating. Anyway, let me fill you in on the situation. This crazy woman is my mom, who gave birth to not only me, but also my older sister Patty and my big brother Will. I guess we all turned out alright, but this wasn't down to mom. She didn't raise us, our nanny Randy did. You see, mom used to be an actress. She was always busy, busy, busy with her work and her numerous flings. Which resulted in each of us three having a different father. Luckily, we had Randy to take care of us, so I never felt like I was missing out on anything. On the contrary, having to see mom all day is a problem for me. A month ago, mom suddenly decided to retire and move in with me and my siblings. And who knew that an out-of-date star could be such a childish, clingy nightmare? Ugh! She didn't like being alone, so she insisted Patty and I had to take turns sleeping next to her. Then, she forced us to accompany her to the mall and be her luggage gophers and talk to her while she went for the zillionth beauty treatment of the week. One day, after an exhausting day out with mom, we entered the house to Will rushing over and shouting. Mom, why did you tamper with my laptop? It turned out that Will had applied to the Juilliard Institute, one of the most famous art institutes in New York. But mom went on his laptop and deleted the school's acceptance email, meaning poor Will had missed out on the response deadline. Oh, sweetheart, I didn't mean to. I was trying to send an email to report those scammers on TV. But I must have accidentally deleted your email. That's probably a good thing anyway, son. It would be better to apply for an economics major at the state university, so our family won't have to be apart. Do you know how hard it was to get in there? Ugh, I can't do this right now. I'm done. Dinner with mom tonight was super awkward. It was just me and her, as Will was simmering in his room, and Patty… well, I don't know where she was. Afterward, I passed by her room and overheard a whimpering sound. I peeked through the gap in the door and saw Will also trying to calm Patty. James is now insisting on breaking up with me. If mom hadn't come to my company and bragged that her daughter was the manager's girlfriend, the story wouldn't have reached my boss and neither of us would be in this mess. I know, right? Mom never cared about us before, but now she thinks she can just waltz back into our lives and do whatever she wants? I've had enough of this. We're both over 18 now. Let's just move out. Oh, no, 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 no. No! Look at their determined eyes. I couldn't let this happen. What about me? Please don't go. I'm not 18 yet. Don't leave me alone with mom. I beg you. Both of them gasped when they saw me. Then after a moment of silence, Will spoke up. Okay, we won't go. But at least we need to get things back to normal. I mean, back to just the three of us and Nanny Randy living in this house. And so, Will suggested we pull a bunch of pranks that would annoy mom so much she'd end up leaving. But they were all busy with their studies and work, so they left it to me to carry out the pranks. Okay then, I'm ready. You can see how my mom was addicted to cola from the pile of empty cans over there. She often did midnight dashes to the convenience store when she ran out. So, my first plan was to make all the cola she's just bought disappear time after time. <laughs> Frustrated much? However, she was strangely calm and acted like it's no big deal at all, and even bought a drinking helmet to make sure her coke was always with her. Attempt failed. Move on to the second plan. Hide the Nintendo Switch. Why, you ask? 
Every night, mom made us play on that thing with her, and honestly speaking, she was the worst player ever, but she wouldn't accept it, and kept making us play those boring games with her until she won. Now, no switch, no troubles, right? Wrong! As having nothing to do, she came up with much more dumb things to ask us to do with her. From teaching her to cook, gardening, and even doing yoga with her. Having mom around is like caring for a toddler. She needs constant care and attention. It's tiring. I can't bear it anymore. You clearly didn't carry out the tricks properly. You're making the situation even worse, don't you see? <sighs> Looks like we'll have to get the job done ourselves. Oh yeah? Fine. You guys do better then. And so they carried on by using mom's ultimate fear of spiders. She's terrified of them. Even the teeny tiny ones were enough to cause her to climb onto a chair in fright until one of us removed it. So, Patty asked me to buy fake spiders online. Then she hid them all over our house. But this time, without panicking, she even picked it up and tossed it in our direction, which freaked us out instead. So, Will decided it was his turn to take some action. He planned that one evening, I would distract Randy, and in the meantime, Will would throw a feast at home then swiftly drag all his friends out, leaving a huge mess for mom. Despite never lifting a finger on cleaning, mom is actually a clean person, so it would definitely drive her crazy. But nope. Once again, it didn't go as planned when Will and Patty came home to find Randy there, helping mom clean up the whole mess. Of course, I was the one who got the blame. Again. Janice, you told us you were able to get Randy away from the house for a day, didn't you? I… I did ask her to take me to dad's, but like midway there, she realized she forgot her phone and insisted on going back. Oh, stop with all the excuses. You're so useless and always do things by halves. The spider trick must have also failed because you bought some cheap ones that look too obviously fake. Yeah, perhaps you've been bought off by mom, aren't you? Spill it! Ugh! Are they seriously accusing me of betrayal right now? Enough! If you're that good, then do it all yourself! I stormed off without any extra words to them. The next morning, while watching Netflix, I heard Patty and Will arguing. It turned out Patty let her boyfriend use her car and he forgot to come pick her up to work. So she's trying to borrow Will's bike so she wouldn't be late for a meeting. But Will wouldn't let her because he had an important dance workshop to attend. Don't your dumb class just always repeat the same wriggle moves? Take the bus instead. You won't die if you're a little late. It's not my fault your gold digging boyfriend forgot to pick you up in your own freaking car. You should have broken up with a jerk like him ages ago. They continued quarreling for a while until I saw Will launch his way down from upstairs shouting. Fine, just take it. Has anyone ever been able to stop you from anything, bossy patty? And he headed straight outside to his bike, then came back after a bit, probably to get some air to calm down. Ugh, would these two give it a rest? How are we meant to figure out a way to win against mom when they couldn't even go a day without bickering? Right then, mom walked in and told me she was going to bake the cake Patty had shown her how to do yesterday. Oops, but I forgot to buy eggs. I wonder if Will needs to use the bike today. I'll borrow it just for a bit. Ha! Great! If mom took the bike, then both of my annoying siblings would have to stop squabbling about it. Right? Yes, mom. Take it. Will said he was gonna take the bus today. It'll be faster to cycle to the grocery store anyway. Then mom hopped on the bike and shakily rode off. After a while, Will and Patty went out to the yard and of course, the bike was no longer there. After I told them that mom had already taken the bike, Will stopped dead. Because the truth was that he had purposely broken the brake so that Patty wouldn't take it. Patty tried calling mom but she didn't pick up. Then came a call from Randy. She told us that mom had crashed the bike and had been hospitalized. Oh no. We rushed there immediately. Unfortunately, apart from a ligament sprain, she's fine. It could have been much worse, but that meant she had to wear a bandage for a whole month to stabilize her leg. Ugh, this was all our fault, so now we had no choice but to whimper to mom's every demand. Mom insisted I spoon feed her all of her meals. When I mentioned that there was nothing wrong with her hands, she told me that the trauma to her leg had affected her entire body. She made Patty light loads of candles, play soothing melodies, and rearrange her bedroom furniture so she had a relaxing space to heal. And she got Will to download her old movies for her and feed her popcorn while she watched them on repeat. 
Of course, we were really worried about her and hoped she'd recover as soon as possible, but honestly, her ridiculous demands were going too far. Then, one day, she insisted we go to a picnic, as sitting inside all day was making her depressed. So, we did exactly just that. Then, while we were walking on a slope, I dropped my bag and bent down to pick it up. Oops, I forgot to lock the wheelchair's wheels! I gasped as I saw mom whiz down the hill. But immediately, she hopped out of the chair and landed on her feet perfectly fine. Will and Patty stared in confusion at mom's casque jeu like performance. What about me? <laughs> nah, I'm not surprised at all, cause I was the one who set this whole thing up to expose mom. Nanny Randy has told me everything. I know she has been helping you dodging our tricks, as well as carrying out that fake bike accident. Please, why do you have to make life so difficult for us? You never even cared about us, did you? As soon as I finished, mom burst into tears. Then she began to pour her heart out. As it turned out, after her career finished, all the fortune, glory, friends, colleagues, and even men who once said that they'd love her for the rest of their lives, turned their backs on her. She was extremely lonely and needed us, her children, more than ever. Now I only have three of you. In the past, I didn't fulfill my responsibilities as a mother, and I know I let you all down. But now, I realize my mistakes. I only did what I did because I wanted to draw you back close to me. Please, forgive me. Give her a chance, kids. Although your mother's actions were somewhat misjudged, she only did them because she genuinely cares about you. Janice, she worried your partying was causing you to neglect your studies. Well, she didn't want your dancing dreams leading to showbiz nightmares like hers. And Patty, trust your mom, she was right this time. Turns out, mom once caught James, the manager, aka Patty's boyfriend, secretly dating the receptionist. <laughs> so she intentionally made a fuzz at Patty's office to deter the third wheel. However, what came after didn't go as she expected and led to such a mess. But now, mission complete! We came here to catch Patty's cheating boyfriend red-handed. Or should I say, her ex-boyfriend. And of course, we made sure he paid for a worthy price for his actions. Ah, <sighs> justice has been served. <laughs> now, to relax. Patty and mom are getting along much better now. They even look more like an endearing couple of sisters than mother and daughter. <laughs> Will's taking mom to one of his contemporary dance shows, so she can see how important it is to him. And me? I may be the youngest in the family, but while Will's away, it's my job to make sure mom has someone to lean on. And I'm glad to take on this role. Maybe having my mom around isn't actually bad after all. Wow, this Florida Beach Resort was the epitome of luxury. Hi, I'm Dakota, the beloved and only daughter of Hardy Bomber, the world-renowned wine billionaire. <sighs> but I don't know why. We have this huge fortune and dad still makes me study and always rushes me to get a job. Well, no way that's gonna happen. So for now, let's just enjoy this gorgeous place and this finest wine, shall we? FYI, there isn't a wine brand in the world I haven't tasted. I can distinguish them all easily with just one sip. Chardonnay versus Riesling? <laughs> Piece of cake. Hmm, let's see if there's anything interesting going on in the world. Wait, wh what is this? There must be some mistake. How, how can daddy be bankrupt? I called him repeatedly, but all I got was the busy signal. Something's wrong. I rushed to the private helicopter to return to our mansion. What's happening? Why are those men carrying away our valuable furniture? The nanny Maria ran out to me in tears. She told me daddy had disappeared and all he'd left behind was this wooden box. I rummaged through it but only found some old notebooks and a certificate of ownership for a farm winery. Oh well, dad may be bankrupt but at least I still have this vineyard to live off. Let's go check out my newly acquired assets then. This place looks huge. I wonder how much money it made a month. I looked around and then wandered into an enormous wine cellar. Curious, I touched some wine barrels when suddenly someone's voice snapped at me. Stay away from them. Who are you? <laughs> I'll have you know that I own this place, so I'll do whatever I want. Have you lost your mind? Get out. Now. He suddenly grabbed my wrist and dragged me outside. I furiously screamed and people started to gather around. Listen up. My name is Dakota, Hardy Bomber's daughter. And from now on, I'm in charge around here. I show them the certificate of ownership as proof. But they didn't seem to care. Only an old looking man came to shake my hand. Welcome, Miss Bomber. I'm Jack, your father's long-standing companion. Come inside. My son James will show you around in a bit. 
Okay, finally, someone showed some manners. Oh, I miss hanging out with my friends. I should have been at Fashion Week right now, not here in this lousy farm. Get up, Couch Potato. We have a vineyard to visit. Ugh, it's that rude guy again. It's too hot outside now. No way I'm making my way out there. So I shoot him away and continued staring at my phone. James then threw the stupid map of the winery at me and left. Thank God, he finally left me alone. After a week of lounging around and being waited on by Nanny Maria, I eventually longed for fresh air. Remembering the map James gave me, I decided to check out the place. First stop, the vineyard. Wow, it's so big! But why did they leave the soil so crackling dry? Let's see, where's the sprinkler? Ha! Huh, there we go! But as soon as I turn it on, a scowling farmer ran over and immediately turned it off. Hey miss, this is not your toy. What's the attitude? They're my employees but have the cheek to act this snootily to me? Harvest this in two weeks. To keep the sweetness of the grapes, no one waters them. Why is this James guy everywhere? I'm the daughter of the wine billionaire. I didn't need any preaching on how to run my farm. Days after that, I came to the farm to pluck up the grass, trim, and fertilize the plants. But I kept getting shooed out. Those awful farmers were so disrespectful. Fine, I needed to show them who's the real boss here. That night, I asked Zach to gather everyone in the communal dining room and declared I would fire some of them for their disrespectful attitudes. But they just gave indifferent looks. How dare they? Didn't they know I could just sell this place and make them all homeless? But then Jack handed me a contract signed by my daddy, stating that due to the blood, sweat, and tears they'd all put into this place, no one has the right to fire them or sell the farm. Jack also gave me other documents. Seemed like due to my family's bankruptcy, the farm had not been doing well. If nothing changes, it might be dissolved. What? So the only property Dad left me was also on the verge of failing? I yelled at them. Then do something to sort it out, now! Suddenly, everyone got up from their seats and glared at me with anger. My head was spinning around. Feeling panicked, I rushed outside. I sat by myself, hugging the wooden box Daddy left me in bewilderment. I flipped the notebooks and was surprised to find a letter in the bottom of the box, in which Dad told all about how from the day Mom passed away, he'd put all the effort into this farm and became a successful entrepreneur. I used to believe that compensating my time for work to provide you with a wealthy life would be enough. All this actually did was create a greater distance between us. My darling Dakota, I'm so sorry. My only hope is that you'll see as much beauty in this vineyard as I do. If only dad was here now, how can I deal with all these troubles and challenges ahead? I burst into tears. They meant no harm. James' voice startled me. I quickly wiped away my tears. He sat beside me and offered a wine-spludged handkerchief. This isn't just some random farm for these people. It's also their home. Don't accuse them of not trying. This farm means far more to them than it does to you. I... I was just... This is when we should all stand together. Don't let your selfishness threaten the future of this whole winery and everyone involved. Even though I hated his guts, what he said did make sense. Maybe I had been neglectful of my responsibility for this place. If this winery was the most precious thing to my dad, then I want to put it right for him. James smiled gently, putting his hand on my shoulder. That's settled then. We're all gonna revive this place. He then left after telling me to show up at the cellar at 5 a.m. the day after. The next morning, while walking around, James told me everything about temperature control and wine brewing. Growing up, Dad would always pass on this wine knowledge to me at the dinner table, and I actually remembered them. He even took me to his wine tasting sessions, and that's how he discovered I was gifted with a great sense of smell and taste buds. Even James was impressed with my talent and said I was born to work in this industry after letting me taste some samples. The next step in the process was much harder than I thought. It took me a whole day to memorize all the different varieties of grapes and how to sort them, but I still messed it up. How come there are so many ripe stages? I was frustrated and was about to leave when Karen, my instructor, called me back. You have to take it slow. Wine takes time and we have to be patient. Okay, fine, I'll try. As I was sorting, I got to chat with the workers and it turned out they were quite friendly and even helped me out a lot. 
It was true that these workers really treated this place like their home and cherished it here. It had been more than two weeks, and I was harvesting the new crop with everyone. Thanks to the tips in Dad's notebook, with a pinch of my own creativity to it, James and I were in the process of creating a new line of wine. I was confident that this would help revive the winery. I was checking stuff in the cellar when James rushed in with a leaflet in his hand. Hey Dakota, this is our chance. Wow, so this town was hosting an upcoming wine festival. If our winery could win something, we could gain lots of orders for this season. The next morning, I prepared all the documents to register for the King of Wine contest. While waiting for the interview, I strolled through the showroom and tasted the previous winning wines. Wow, they all have unique tastes. Since I had my eyes closed to appreciate the wine layers, I bumped into a handsome guy and accidentally spilled red wine on his shirt. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. No biggie, it's just a small stain. Oh my, he was such a gentleman, which made me feel even more guilty. I was about to ask for his contact so I could make it up for him later when the organizer called me for the interview. My eyes were just looking away from him for a sec and he'd already gone. Anyway, it was a blessing the interview went well, and our winery was eligible for the contest. I decided to treat myself to a coffee before heading back, but at the <gasps> counter, I realized I didn't have any money on me. Oh no. I... I forgot my wallet. I'll pay for that. Wait, it's him. The guy I spilled the wine on. Turns out, he's Danny, and he might be young, but he's in fact a skilled wine critic who even held the position of vice president of the city's wine association. More surprisingly, he's a fan of my dad's and adores the wines he created. After chatting with him, I came back to the farm to tell everyone the good news. They were all very excited and started preparing for the competition right away. Two weeks before the competition, the organizing committee sent over a few people to do some preliminary assessments. And guess what? Danny was also here, being a part of the inspection team. So, after the inspection, I invited Danny to stay and share some knowledge about wine brewing. And fortunately, he's free for a few days and was pleased to stick around. Yay! I excitedly told James the great news, but he responded with no interest. That's not exactly good news. Hmm, why? Oh, I see. You're jealous of him, aren't you? What? Me? Jealous? What does he even have for me to be envious about? Well, he's handsome and also exceedingly knowledgeable about wine. And people seem to like him. Wait, where are you going? I haven't finished. Whatever, no one needs him. As we have Danny here now, such a charming gentleman. <sighs> for the next two days, Danny kept trying to make time for me. Yes, just the two of us. Gosh, he's so romantic. I could spend hours with him. Dakota, you're the most special girl I've ever met. Hey, dinner time. Ugh, another would-be perfect moment ruined by James. He seemed to go out of his way to come between us. He sat in between us in the dining room, saying it was his favorite seat. Then, he followed us into the vineyard and said he was checking the quality of the grapes at 11 p.m. For real? Such a third wheel, and he's so cranky toward Danny. Hello, the guy's trying to help us here, so why the grumpy attitude? Later that night, I was passing by the kitchen when I overheard James and his dad. Should we start now? Definitely. The big day is coming up, or else we won't make it. Dakota is busy being all lovey-dovey with that jerk. She doesn't need to know this. What? Are they planning something behind my back? And then, something absolutely horrible happened the next day. When Danny and I arrived at the cellar to pick up the competition wine, we stepped into a sauna. What is this? Why is the wine cellar so hot? Someone must have tampered with the room temperature. I rushed to check the wine. Oh no, the heat had removed the last two notes and made it too sour. I fell to the ground and started sobbing. Danny tried to comfort me. He told me not to worry as he'd introduced some big clients to me, then he had to leave to prepare for the upcoming competition. I looked at the barrels in sorrow, but then remembered something. My dad also set the heat too high once and found a way to filter and ferment it again to tone down the sour flavor. I'm sure it's somewhere in the notes he left. I hurried back to my room to search through the wooden box, but I couldn't find it anywhere. Someone definitely was messing with me. Oh my god, who else could it be? The conversation between James and his dad came to mind. 
so I furiously went to look for him. Seeing James, I couldn't control my anger and shouted, It's you, isn't it? You adjusted the wine cellar temperature. You stole my father's notebook. You've been planning to sabotage me for a long time, haven't you? James acted confused, but before the snake could blurt out anything, I stopped him and said, Get out of here, now! He gave a defeated nod, then left without a word. Tomorrow is the day of the contest, yet I don't have any wine to enter. I picked up the letter my father left me and felt like a loser. Maybe I'm just not fit for this. Right at this moment, James pushed the door open. Dakota, look! I told you to leave! Ignoring my words, James calmly poured a glass of wine and told me to try it. Oh, this actually tastes pretty good. It's the new one you created. I stayed up a few nights and fixed its sacred taste. Now we can take it to the contest. I yelped out in joy, then lunged to hug a surprised looking James. Look at his face, red as a tomato. <laughs> but remembering how sketchy he was in the kitchen the other night, I quickly let go of him and calmed down. First things first, we had to hit the road now to participate in the competition. Our wine stall attracted a lot of guests and got highly praised by all the judges. When Danny saw us, I noticed how surprised he seemed by my presence with this new wine. I didn't expect the technique of filtration and fermentation could change the flavor so amazingly. You're really talented, Dakota. Let's take some time to discuss this in more detail later. I happily agreed, but isn't that technique recorded in my dad's notebook? How did he know it? I left the bar and sneakily followed Danny. Then in a hidden corner, I overheard him talking to someone. I've adjusted the seller's heat to destroy everything, but who knew she'd use her father's technique to fix it? I've already taken the notebook away, but she probably remembered them all. Whatever the reason is, her wine is becoming a strong rival. My championship is at stake. Can you just do something? So, have I been trusting the wrong person? Well, that hurts. But I'll sure make him pay for that. I quickly submitted the recording to the judges, and immediately there was an announcement to pause, and the wines were regraded by blind tasting to be fair. And you know what, the new wine I created won the third prize. Okay, so the prize money wasn't as grand, but it'd help us get a decent amount of orders for the next year's crop. I happily went to the podium to accept the award, and almost fainted on stage because the awarder was no one other than my dad. I hugged him and sobbed uncontrollably. It turned out that my father was not bankrupt, he just donated all his assets to charity. His plan to pretend bankruptcy was just to help me become more independent and walk on my own feet. It's unbelievable, but I'm not mad at him for it. On the contrary, I feel very fortunate that my father did that to give me a chance to grow up. As for Danny, he was kicked out of the City Wine Association. <laughs> That's the price to pay for his caddishness, he deserves it. And James, it turns out that the conversation between him and his father was just about fixing the wine as the two of them discovered the spoiled wine way before I did. Now, the vineyard is my first career, just like it was my dad's. This place is my home, and the workers are my family. Yep, this even includes this cold cranky guy. Hey guys, I'm Feather, and I look just like any other 16-year-old, right? Actually, my life as a teenager is far from ordinary since I have hemophilia a rare disease in which my blood doesn't clot properly, so even a simple graze could be fatal. My parents are so worried that I might hurt myself that they keep me safely shut away in this mansion. In fact, I've never left it. Money isn't a problem to them as they own this massive energy corporation, so to compensate for me not being able to go outside, they make sure I get anything I ask for. My giant playroom is cool, right? Not only that, but I also own a dressing room with hundreds of cute Lolita outfits. And an enormous pantry full of my favorite snacks that I can enjoy at any time. You see, there's honestly nothing to complain about. Except, I suppose it does get a bit lonely sometimes. Until one morning, I was woken up by a screeching noise coming from downstairs. Are you kidding me? Do you want to burn my throat with this or what? What's going on here? I went over to the living room and was stunned to see a girl sitting way too comfortably on our couch. I was still trying to figure out who she was when she suddenly said, You, standing at the door, get me another glass of cool water. Now. Taken aback, I instinctively went to get her water. Then the girl finally looked up and seemed startled to see me. Oh my, I'm terribly sorry. I thought you were just one of the maids. Turns out she's Katie the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Forger, the two scientists that are collaborating with our family's corporation. 
My parents arranged for them to stay here to facilitate the research on the upcoming project. When I told her about my life and condition, she seemed really surprised. Oh, Feather, it's as if you live in your own tiny world. There are already flying cars out there, and they've just invented time machines too. You're missing out on so much. Really? How come no one told me about this? <laughs> I'm just joking, silly. Whoa, you weren't kidding about not leaving this place, were you? Then she started telling me about some of her favorite things to do in the outside world, such as watching the latest movies in the cinema, going to the mall where she could actually try things on before buying them, or attending all the fun festivals. It all sounds so cool. We chatted for ages, then I showed Katie around the mansion. Her reaction when seeing my dressing room and the playroom was seriously priceless. <laughs> From then on, I spent lots of time with Katie, but my favorite part about being around her were her stories about school, where she got to learn new things and make a lot of friends. Seeing my excited expression, Katie immediately suggested that I talk to my parents about maybe letting me experience it myself. Actually, it doesn't hurt to try, right? So at dinner, I gathered my courage to say, Mom, Dad, I want to go to school. I understand that you're worried for me, so Katie will come along to protect me. Right, Katie? Oh, yes, that's right. Feather is in good hands, Mr. and Mrs. Adams. My parents seemed very hesitant, but after a whole lot of persuading, they finally agreed with conditions. We'll join the most prestigious school in the state and have our own chauffeur. As for Katie, to avoid any incidents occurring, I suggest you get rid of the long nails and jewelry, Katie. We went back to my room after dinner, and I just couldn't hide my excitement. Yes, we'll get to go to school together soon. What should I prepare? What would you recommend? But then I noticed Katie staring in sorrow at her newly done set of nails. I'm so sorry, Katie. Is there anything I can do to make it up to you? It's okay, Feather. What matters is that you're able to go to school, and I'm so happy for you. It's bedtime anyways. I'll head back to my room now. I'm so lucky to have a friend like her. As I was indulging in my thoughts, a familiar voice startled me. Hey, I heard you two are going to school. Are you sure it's safe? Katie doesn't seem all that trustworthy. That is none of your business. You're just jealous that I've made a new friend while you're still lonely, aren't you? In case you're wondering, this guy is Liam, the butler's son. He was my childhood best friend and used to come to the mansion every day for homeschooling and to spend time with me. But we had some petty argument and I hadn't seen him since. Well, at least not until now. He was about to ramble about something else, but I slammed the door in his face. I wasn't going to let him ruin my mood. What I need to think about is my school day that's coming up. Oh my, it's so exciting, I really can't wait. Ah, we are going to Edgewood High today. So I decided to wear my favorite Lolita dress as Katie suggested. Oh, I almost forgot, Mr. Freddy. He's been my best friend since childhood, and of course he had to come along with me on this big day. Katie also said I should try introducing him to everyone. That would help me make new friends faster. Such a brilliant idea. Whoa, we're finally here. Hey, Katie, how do we find our lockers? Hey, Katie, when is lunch? Hey, Katie, do you know who's going to teach us? Oh my god, Feather, stop asking. Everyone's staring. Uh, I didn't even notice. It's probably because we're new. Hi, I'm Feather. Or maybe it's because of your extravagant outfit. Before I could say anything, someone spoke up. That's a lovely dress. Oh, you're right. They do seem to like my dress. <laughs> I waited for everyone in the room to settle, then confidently introduced myself. Hi, everyone. I'm Feather, and this is my best friend, Mr. Freddy. As soon as they saw Mr. Freddy, everyone burst out laughing. I didn't know what was so funny, so I just awkwardly laughed along. After class, I asked Katie why our classmates laughed earlier, and what she told me was unbelievable. They were making fun of me. It's so sad to know, but I guess not everyone can be as nice as Katie. She also told me to dress down next time to attract less unwanted attention. It's a bit upsetting, but I guess I'll have to do what's best. So I listened to Katie's advice and ditched the OTT dress. Just like she said, people actually stopped staring at me. Here, hold this. You look really good holding books. Huh? That sounds kind of weird. But it's fine though. She probably wanted my help but was just too shy to ask. After the morning classes, I went to buy a bunch of lollipops, and that might look odd to Katie, so I let her know about how lollies are my special anxiety remedy. People here seem to be quite judgy, which got me a bit uneasy. You want one? Aw, poor you, but no thanks. By the way, I'll have lunch with David today, you know, the cute jock in our math class. So you're on your own this noon, okay? Then she quickly left without waiting for my response. I didn't know having lunch alone was so boring. 
everyone has their own group, except for this one guy wearing a hoodie and a mask. Hi, can I join you? But he didn't even reply, just stood up and moved to another seat. Did, did I do something wrong? Feeling the anxiety taking over, I immediately took a lollipop to calm myself down. And it's doing a wonderful job at making me feel better. But suddenly, someone snatched it out of my hand. I chased after him, but slipped on someone's foot and fell hard on the floor. Panicked, I burst out crying, and I heard the guy that took my candy say, Huh, huh, feather the toddler. Then everyone laughed at me again. Luckily, a guy spoke up. Stop this nonsense. What are you going to do if she's injured? Oh, wait, it's the weird guy from lunch. He checked on me to make sure everything was fine, then quietly went back to his seat. I didn't even have the chance to ask for his name before the teacher came in. This guy was so strange, but there was one thing I didn't understand. Why was Katie also laughing? Back home, Katie came to find me in the playroom, and I questioned her about the incident earlier, and she quickly apologized as she thought they were just joking. She then suggested going shopping and offered to buy me something to cheer me up. And so I agreed immediately. We went to the mall the next morning, and I had the best time. We had iced coffee and some delicious pudding. Katie also got me an adorable little hair clip, and so I bought her a bunch of new clothes in return. We were about to head home when Katie said, Hey Feather, um, I have a cousin whose sneakers are falling apart. Would it be okay if you helped me get him a new pair? Of course, anything for my best friend. Making my best friend happy was the most wonderful feeling in the world. I'm so grateful to have such a lovely person like her to come into my life. But then, the next day, I walked into class to see Katie being all lovey-dovey with the boy who took my lollipop. So that's the David that she mentioned, and on his feet were the brand new sneakers that were supposed to be for her cousin. Why is he wearing the shoes I bought? Then Katie pulled me outside and explained profusely, Feather, calm down. The, the shoes were too big for my cousin, so I gave them to David. I didn't lie to you, I promise. Fine. Please just don't let me see him wearing them again. I felt really bad since Katie seemed really sad after hearing what I said. At that moment, David approached me. What's up, toddler? You got a problem with my new kicks? I froze in fear. Then thankfully, an announcement came through the speaker. David Peterson, please come to the principal's office immediately. Turns out he's in trouble for spray painting a teacher's car. At least someone already helped me teach him a lesson, but that wasn't all. A few more of my classmates also got detention for cheating on the math quiz yesterday, while some others got caught skipping classes. It was such a crazy morning. It's as if someone was trying to play the hero here. Finally, it's lunch break. Hoped things would be better in the afternoon, but... Huh? What is this? A poster of me? It also says underneath, Feather the toddler is the snitch. Katie took a look at it and said that the best way to deal with these kinds of jokes was just to play along. Um, I'm not sure about that, but it seems like the only way now. And so, I climbed on an empty chair in the cafeteria and started speaking loud and clear. Mm, may I have everyone's attention, please? Hi, I am Feather the Toddler, and I am proud of it. Instead of getting the response I'd hoped for, what I got back was food. The whole cafeteria was laughing and throwing food at me. I covered my face, trying to dodge it, but the floor got slippery from all the greasy food, so I ended up falling. Oh no! I scratched myself! I could only lay on the ground out of pain! People finally stopped as they saw me bleed. All I could vaguely hear was a familiar voice calling my name. I woke up in the hospital to find Liam sitting next to me. Feather, you're awake. Do you feel pain anywhere? Well, Liam? Why are you here? Where's Katie? Katie? You're still worried about Katie? She's the one who was behind all this. She told the principal about your classmates and told everyone it was you to make them hate you. What? How is that possible? Turns out the guy who was always wearing a hoodie and mask was Liam. Liam had always been suspecting something shady in Katie's behavior. So after failing in warning me about her, he decided to look out for me himself instead. I cried and tried to hug him despite the pain on my arm. Then Liam showed me a shocking video of Katie talking trash about me to everyone. Oh, why was Feather carrying my books, you ask? It's because her parents work for my family's corporation and she'll do anything I tell her to as long as I give her some money. <laughs> Seeing the anger and also disappointment in my eyes, Liam calmed me down and said he had a plan to expose my so-called best friend. When I returned to school a few days later, I stormed straight over to Katie. It's you! You're behind it all! I already know everything. <laughs> Stop being ridiculous, Feather. You got busted and now you're trying to blame me. 
Drop the act. No one's falling for it. At the end of class, Katie suddenly gathered everyone. People, head over to the lecture hall. I have something very interesting to show you guys. Oh boy, I wonder what else she has planned. Liam and I quickly followed the crowd and found Katie standing on stage. Oh, Feather, I'm glad you're here. This is about you, after all. The screen started playing a video of me sitting on my swing, playing with my dolls, and taking armfuls of candy out of the pantry. Do you see that, everyone? Feather is just a toddler in a teenager's body. Such a weirdo. I was waiting for everyone to start laughing, but the crowd stayed completely silent. Then Katie hesitantly continued, Not only that, she's also the poser who snitched on us. Then, to her surprise, the angry crowd started booing and shouting at Katie, saying she is the evil snitch. Then they turned to me. Your rooms are actually pretty cool. I wish I had a snack pantry like that. It's so awesome. Katie sounded panicked as she continued talking more trash stuff about me, but no one listened. Turns out, Liam had set up a group chat in which he'd posted proof of Katie's actions, including the video of her talking to David, and also pictures of her coyly walking out of the principal's office after she must have snitched on everyone, and her putting up that mean poster about me. Katie, you're the one embarrassing yourself. Everyone knows that you're a snake in the grass. I trusted you, and what I get back are all these lies and schemes. I feel so ashamed for ever calling you a friend. As Katie looked around at the unimpressed looking crowd, she realized her game was up, and quickly fled the scene. Later on, we arrived home to see my angry-looking parents standing next to Katie's mom and dad, who had all their luggage packed ready to move out. Yes, Liam had already told them everything. In the end, Katie's parents made her apologize to me. Only after a lot of persuading did my parents let them keep their jobs. I never saw Katie again, but I did make a bunch of new friends that I invite around sometimes. The snack pantry is a big hit. <laughs> Now, I wear whatever I like without worrying about being judged. Most of all, I'm enjoying my school life, and it's all thanks to the help of my trusty soulmate, Liam. Just one step into the hallway, and I could already hear all kinds of whispers going all around. Um, what happened? Did you forget, Sandra? It's Monday. <sighs> oh, not again. Who's the unlucky victim this week? Dorothy! It's Dorothy! <laughs> Look what embarrassing deed she's done! So, it was a photo of the resident mean girl, Dorothy, on a date with some old rich guy. Ben and I had zero interest in those kinds of things, but these kids on the other hand... Hey! There she is! This was the third Monday in a row that our school had turned into this gossiping chaos zone. Why, you ask? Three weeks ago, out of nowhere, a bunch of random QR codes appeared to talk to some of the lockers. Curious, we scanned them and got access to this mysterious blog by someone called Quiet Night. They said they wanted to expose the true face of this prestigious school. So, every Monday at 2 a.m., they would reveal someone's dirty secret. And the first secret belonged to the beloved basketball team captain, Lewis. Turns out he flunked the last match on purpose so the rival school that his secret girlfriend attended would win. At first, everyone doubted it, but then someone found the girlfriend's Twitter where she posted a celebration photo. So, there you go. Everything became clear as day. Lewis immediately lost his captain title and the entire school cancelled him. While everyone was still buzzing with that, already came the next Monday secret. It was Mr. Worthing, our popular math teacher. His classes were known for their top performances. But as it turned out, he had always accidentally leaked the questions to his students before every exam. The rumor reached the principal, and he immediately had people look into it. Unfortunately, it was true, so Mr. Worthing was fired. And as you've heard, little Miss Dorothy was the third unfortunate victim. To be honest, she definitely hadn't been the nicest girl. She's a nightmare to all the new kids especially. So when her shameful secret was revealed, everyone seemed to be somewhat satisfied and talked about it non-stop. My BFF, Mary, was no exception, as Dorothy was a rival for her queen bee status. At lunchtime, we arrived at the cafeteria, but weirdly, nobody lined up to get lunch. They were all looking around at something. Turns out Dorothy was here too. She's sitting alone at a table. Not wanting to miss an opportunity to taunt her longtime rival, Mary rushed straight over there. What's wrong? Your bald lover didn't take you out to lunch today? As soon as those words came out of Mary's mouth, everyone burst out laughing. Benjamin and I had to drag Mary out of there right away to avoid any calamities. What are you guys doing? I'm not done yet. 
This isn't cool. Let's just stay out of it. What? She deserves it. You know the clearest what a horrible person she is, Sandra. Or have you forgotten how she picked on you? Well, it's true. I was also one of Dorothy's victims when I just got here. Ben and Mary were the ones who stuck up for me. That's also how our precious friendship all started. Ever since then, we've been the iconic trio of the smartest kids at school. Pretty sweet, huh? However, the recent dramas have undeniably affected our studies. It's like students are coming here just to gossip, and they keep chatting in class, making concentrating extra hard. Monday mornings became the biggest event in school. Everyone looked forward to it, guessing who's the next chosen one, as the embarrassing secrets continued seething out. How Justin looks cool chewing his gum all the time, but he actually does this to mask his bad breath problem. Hardworking Julia bought her essays off the internet. The parking lot car spray painter turned out to be none other than Goody Two Shoes Brandon. It became apparent that any one of us could be next. So people started to panic, praying that their name wouldn't be mentioned. Every Monday morning, I arrived at school to see everyone looking like zombies, cause they'd all stayed up all night waiting for the quiet night's post. The mystery blogger had to be one of us to know all kinds of personal secrets like this, so everyone became extra cautious of each other. It's a mess and this has to stop. We needed to figure out who the quiet night was and stop this. But Mary wasn't convinced. How are we supposed to find them? There's zero clue. Stop wasting time. Let's just focus on studying, Sandra. There's no way they didn't leave any trace. We just have to stand up together. Nope. If you want to, then just do it alone. What's wrong with you? Weren't you usually the first one to avoid dramas like these? Because we could be next. So what? I'm not scared. I have nothing to hide. Then she left in a sulky manner. Mary might not care, but I did. I spent the night trying to piece the clues together when my phone had a pop-up. Ugh, was it 2am already? Who could it be this week? I pressed to see. It's Mary! Oh no, is it about that thing? Yep, that's it. The secret about Mary's background has been revealed. Her parents aren't successful business owners, and of course, Mary is not a rich mistress like how she always acted like either. I accidentally found out about this when I saw her bargaining about the rent in front of a small house in the suburbs. When I asked Mary why she had to lie like that, she just got all defensive. What do you know? If people knew the truth, they would laugh in my face. I of course didn't want to hurt Mary, so I always kept it a secret. <sighs> but now, everyone has found out in the worst way. The next day, Ben and I saw Mary walking toward us, looking exhausted, while everyone's eyes were on her. Yo, how'd you think she's able to afford those flashy outfits? Didn't that blogger say she always wears cheap secondhand clothes? Pathetic! Hearing those words, Ben and I gave those kids death stares and rushed to get Mary out of the crowd, but she suddenly snapped at me. Sandra, you're behind all of this, aren't you? Huh? What? Mary, what? What do you mean? Why would I do that? You're the only one who knew my secret. If it wasn't you, who else could it be? You are the quiet knight. What she said quickly caught everyone's attention, and I felt everyone's curious eyes fixed on us. Mary, that's not right. Remember, it's Sandra who called on everyone to find the culprit. That was clearly a distraction to fool everyone. Mary then continued explaining her reasonings for why she suspected me. The blogger only ever typed in lowercase just like I always did, and she also mentioned my habit of staying up late. To make it even worse, the next Monday, that blogger suddenly stopped posting, making everyone certain it was me. So I was instantly labeled a traitor to my friends and even a germ who raised hatred among students in this school. Everywhere I went, people badmouthed me, and no one except for Benjamin wanted to sit by me at lunch. I wasn't even allowed in the library anymore, as everyone would be talking about me which would cause disturbance. Worst of all, the teachers hated me too. One time in math class, I volunteered to solve a difficult equation, but all I got back from the teacher was, Sandra, if only you just used your intelligence for studying, not for messing up other people's lives. Then everyone heartlessly laughed at my face. The tension was draining me, so I went out to take a breather. After recess, I got back to the classroom to find a box in my desk drawer. Oh no, wasn't it the love letters I'd written for Lewis? I mean, yes, I used to have a crush on the basketball captain, but it was a long time ago, and I never sent the letters. 
How come they are all here? I sure had hidden them in the corner of my locker. Is it the creepy quiet night messing with me? Ugh, that's enough. I gotta unmask this jerk ASAP. Hmm, who could it be? Who had the ability to spy on people undetected? I was trying to figure this out when a smug-looking Dorothy appeared. Jeez, look at her. Can't believe she's the coward who destroys what she couldn't have. Too bad for Lewis that he ended up involved in this. Oh, such a pathetic little girl. Doesn't even have the guts to send any of the letters. <laughs> oh my god. Did they just say letters? What letters? What on earth are you talking about? There's no mistaking your handwriting. She showed me bunches of photos of my letters. Oh no, did she take revenge on me because she thought I was the snitch of her dating news? Not leaving me a chance to explain, they just laughed and continued mocking me. I couldn't face going to school and being tormented for something I didn't even do. So I faked being sick to stay home for a few days. But it's been a week and I still didn't feel better. Suddenly, there was a strange sound by the window. Turns out, it was Benjamin! Sandra, please stop hiding away. You can't let them beat you. You're better than this. What else can I do? Everyone's convinced it was me! Follow me. I know someone who can help. Now, I was sitting in a cafe with Benjamin, and Max, an IT genius in our school. Benjamin insisted this guy could help identify the anonymous blogger. After just a few minutes of checking the IP, Max has been able to track it down. But, huh? It led to Mary's place? Huh? No way. This makes no sense. I gotta talk to Mary. Calm down. Don't say a word about this to anyone for now. Just let me take care of it. I had no clue what Benjamin was planning. He said he would help me clear up the case, but nothing happened for days. Until now, he insisted I come to watch this basketball game. What's the point? It just gave others a chance to mock me further. While immersed in my thoughts, suddenly I heard someone's voice on the loudspeaker. It was Benjamin. Hi everyone, I'm sure you guys are tired of the Quiet Nights blog by now, right? Yeah, at first, I just wanted to entertain you all a bit after boring hours of studying. But I guess it's no longer fun, huh? <laughs> I'm sorry then, I'll stop now. Thanks for tuning in. What on earth is he doing? Now, the entire sports hall was buzzing. Is it really you? Benjamin was about to reply when Mary jumped out. No, it can't be you! Stop wasting time protecting Sandra! How could you possibly know where her love letters were kept? Or about Dorothy's secret? So, you tell me, who knew those things then? Mary looked taken aback and confused. Then Dorothy appeared. It's her! It's her who gave me Sandra's locker key! Wh what? So it really was Mary! I was still hoping that Ben's friend made a mistake somewhere instead, but... Why Mary? I don't understand. Of course you don't! You're not in my shoes to judge! Turns out at first, Mary created the blog for the sole purpose of getting revenge on Lewis for being a cheater. He always told Mary that he wanted to date in secret to avoid peering eyes, but it was just an excuse so he could sneak around with other girls. Which is why this was news to both Ben and me! How about the math teacher? What has he ever done to you? He had no work ethic, so he deserved it. I always studied really hard, but he said that girls like me only ever cared about our appearance. He still thought my good grades were from copying these two. And you, Dorothy? It serves you right for the arrogant habit of bossing newbies around. Then she blatantly left the crowd as if she had nothing to do with the school drama all this time. I tried to chase after her, but I was stuck amid this angry crowd. There's still something she hasn't explained yet. The following days, Mary still went to school, but all of the other students isolated her. Benjamin and I tried to approach her, but she went out of her way to avoid us. So, after school, we decided to follow her. We saw her going to the cafeteria, but not to buy things, but to help the lunch lady clean up. Mary, stop being like this. You've still got a friend in me, but don't you think I deserve an explanation to? She then finally sat down and talked to us. Mary would have stopped after exposing the three people she hated, but when she saw everyone eagerly waiting for the news every Monday, she found it interesting and continued to bring up other embarrassing things. But then, when things started getting serious, she panicked and looked for someone to blame, and that person was me! Because I was the one who first came up with the idea of tracking down this anonymous blogger. Furthermore, she was angry with me for finding out her secret. Envious because I got better grades than her, and jealous because I was closer to Ben than she was. 
Mary admitted she felt outshined and left out. So you decided to expose your own secret you kept for so long just to frame me? Do you hate me that much? No, no, Sandra, it's not like that. I'm really sorry. As for that secret, I had tried to act like a hot girl from a rich family just to be worthy of that jerk, Louis. But since I know he's a bad guy, there's no point of keeping that secret anyway. Ben and I leaned over and hugged her, saying it was all okay. As long as we are honest from now on, we'd be able to sort everything out. After that, we helped Mary clean up the messy tables in the cafeteria. And can you believe it? The lunch lady is actually Mary's mother. She was the one who unintentionally told Mary all the petty secrets that everyone gossiped about while getting lunch. Mary has always hidden the fact her mom's the lunch lady, but after being exposed and boycotted, she gave up and decided not to try hard for the popular girl title anymore, but just to be herself. I knew that this was hard for Mary, but deep down, she has a good heart, else she wouldn't have befriended me when I first started at this school. Living up to the expectations of being the school's it girl must have been exhausting. It's been a semester full of drama, hasn't it? Phew, lucky it's almost over. Now we're in a hurry to revise all lessons together to prepare finals week. We still compete with each other a lot, but this time it's fair and square. The three of us already decided that whoever gets the lowest score will have to take the other two out for dinner. Free food, here I come, as I definitely am not going to lose. <laughs> Hey guys, Private Davis here. Yep, Taylor Davis, the girl who secretly disguised herself as her twin brother to attend an all-boy military school. In the last part, I had to deal with my fair share of challenges, but having Tom and Henry, my two best pals by my side, made things way easier. But still, there were problems my two comrades couldn't help me with, such as this situation right now involving Ellis, finding out about my real identity. Not that I'm interested in your mess. But I need to find my brother Jacob. So, let's make a deal. I'll keep your secret if you help me find him. What? How am I meant to find a guy I don't even know? To my surprise, Ellis then truthfully told me his story. Turns out, he came to this school for two reasons. To punish those who picked on Jacob, and to find clues about his disappearance. Meanwhile, I coincidentally met this Jacob guy outside of school and found his dog tag. So I was the only lead he had for now. But could I really trust this guy? I mean, just look at what he did to Eric. If you don't want to do it, then I can go to the principal's office. Okay, so what? I found the dog tag while we snuck out to a local girl's school. That's all I know. If you spill my secret, I won't let you find your brother in peace either. So you better know a way to take me to that school. I'll pick the time to make a move and you just try your best not to get caught. The next morning, I was walking to class as usual when I passed a bunch of guys huddled together, whispering something about me? Huh? Wait, did Ellis reveal my identity to everyone? Such a fraud! I ran to find him, but accidentally crashed into this boy called Finley. I helped him up as the whispers around us got even louder. Guess you're one of the alleged suspects too. Finley then told me that yesterday, someone discovered a box that looked just like a pack of candy in the bathroom, but inside were a bunch of tampons. So now the students thought there was either a pervert on campus, or that one of us was secretly a girl. And according to them, anyone who never joined the public shower was suspicious. Oh no, what if they found out the tampons were mine? Guys, hot girl alert! Everyone immediately forgot about me and flocked to him. The buzz on campus was that an inspection officer was staying here for a few months, and he'd brought his beautiful daughter Ivy along with him. People said she looks like a fairy with this ethereal vibe. Just then the inspector, Ivy, and his group stepped into the hallway. I watched them all drool over her. Poof, please. Anyone would think they'd never seen a girl before. She walked past these silly boys with a smug smile, but as soon as she caught sight of me standing there unfazed, she froze to the spot and stared straight at me. What? Was I supposed to show off my smitten face too? Dad, I need someone to show me around school. Can I take him? What? Why me? I couldn't even say anything as the principal had already agreed. Come on, let's go. Oh, you're so muscular. Ew, gross. Later on, she shooed Henry and Tom out of the entertainment room just because she wanted to spend time alone with me. 
Another time, when we were about to do our cleaning duty, Ivy popped out of nowhere and asked me to go hang with her. She even stopped two guys passing by and did her whole fluttering eyelashes routine to persuade them to do my cleaning duties instead. Ivy, I appreciate your help, but we all have our chores to do. This isn't fair on the others. Don't you get it, Jack? I did all this because I want to be close to you. I like you. I... uh... um... I think you'll be better suited to someone else. Then I ran out of there, leaving everyone behind stunned at my harsh rejection. For the next couple of days, Ivy was furious and looked at me like she wanted to tear me to pieces. And the whispers started circulating again. They said that refusing a girl as beautiful as Ivy meant that I must have not had any interest in girls. Or even worse, I probably was a girl myself, and I was the one who dropped the tampons in the bathroom. Gosh, this was bad. That night, as usual, I just stepped out of the communal bathroom after a late night shower when someone suddenly dragged me into the equipment room. It was Ellis. What's going on? Just then, footsteps resounded from the hall. I held my breath as I anxiously waited for them to pass by. Phew, that was close. Turns out, that afternoon, Ellis heard the officers discussing security tightening, especially in the student communal bathroom area at night. So he waited for me outside and hid me just in time. He saved me. We tried to sneak through the new building close to our dorm, but unfortunately bumped into... Ivy. What are you doing here? Trying to sneak out, huh? Officer- It's not what you think, I- Jack came here to confess his feelings to you, right? Jack? Oh, uh, um, yes. I- I think I'm fond of you. Oh yeah? Then why did you refuse me the other day? He was just too insecure. I mean- you're quite the catch with your high-up dad while well, he's just a private. But he can't ignore his feelings for you any longer, so... Ugh, cringe. But it worked, as Ivy looked so moved and lunged forward to hug me. Then I guess we officially became a couple? <laughs> and as Ellis planned, the rumors about me being a girl were replaced with jealous gazes. Now Ivy followed me to every class, every break time. I barely had any time alone. This tactical combat course was my only chance to get away from her. We had to go to this warehouse to practice saving a mannequin captive. I was focusing on the mission, but still got caught by an enemy. Wait, it was Ellis? He seemed agitated and told me we needed to leave this Friday afternoon. As we were discussing how to sneak out of school, why do you need to meet up? We almost jumped out of our skin. Ivy! Why are you sneaking up on us? What did you hear? Just you asking my boyfriend out? Oh, I see what's going on here. You like Jack, don't you? Weirdly, Ellis seemed flustered. He was sweating and mumbling out nonsense. Was he that scared of Ivy? Suddenly, Ivy grabbed my collar, trying to kiss me? Panicked, I shoved her duck face away. Just in time, the siren went off, signaling the course was over, so I ran out of there. To avoid Ivy, the plan changed to early Friday morning. I had to fake an injury to get out of class. Ellis and I met up at the back door, jumped into the milk delivery truck, and let it take us to the local girl's school. When we arrived, I led him to the school entrance where I'd found Jacob's dog tag. We spoke to some students, but no one knew who Jacob was, and people started to stare at us as if we were creeps. <sighs> we were about to give up when this woman approached us. Why are you looking for Jacob? You look exactly like him. Turned out, she's Mrs. Walker, a teacher here, and she knows Jacob. Her husband found him dazed and injured at the edge of the woods and took him in. His health got better with time, but his happiness didn't. So when prom came, Mrs. Walker told Jacob to go and enjoy the night, hoping he'd feel better. But he returned early and was only invested in this dog tag he'd picked up from someone named Jack Davis since that was also the name of Jacob's favorite drag queen who performed at big theaters. This incident then gave Jacob a push to take action. He always wanted to live with his true self, but he'd been lost along the way. So he decided to venture to find Jack Davis, the role model that might be the only one who could help him now. He had parted ways with the walkers to go on this self-discovery journey not long ago. On the way back, Ellis and I stayed quiet. I didn't expect Jacob to know my twin brother, should I tell Ellis that I might know where Jacob went? But I couldn't just lead him to my home to find his brother as... My parents didn't know I'd disguised as Jack and joined this all-boy military school. 
If they ever found out about this, I could kiss my soldier dreams goodbye. When the truck stopped, I got off and was about to go back to the dorm when Ellis pulled my hand. You know that Jack, right? Is he your twin brother? If it's true, then please tell me where he is. I'm sorry, but I can't. I, I've got homework to do. Then I left as he called after me. The next day, I tried to avoid Ellis, but he was ahead of me. He was desperate, but I just shook my head. Y you selfish fraud! Right away, Tom ran to stand between me and Ellis while Henry defended me. What, you want to become the next Eric? Get lost, you jerk! Oh no. I tried explaining to them that Ellis didn't mean any harm, but they didn't listen and just pulled me away from him. I felt so bad. For that whole day, I kept thinking about what had happened. Ellis was right. I was selfish. He might never see his brother again because of me. I had to go help him. But when I got to his room, his roommate said he'd already taken his annual leave to go find his brother. Oh no. He must have figured out my home address somehow. I gotta go home, but how to get out of school? It wasn't milk delivery day. As I was thinking, Tom and Henry approached me, asking why I was acting so weird. <sighs> This was it? I guess I shouldn't lie to them any longer. Guys, I have something to tell you. I'm actually a girl. Then I told them why I came here in the first place, how things got entangled with Ellis, and now he went looking for my house as his brother might be there. I waited for them to be mad, but instead, they smiled gently at me. That's a pretty big secret to carry. Girl or boy, this changes nothing. You're still our friend. They were not angry with me. I felt so relieved knowing that I didn't have to hide anything from them anymore. Hmm, now I just needed to figure out a way to go home. We can handle this. Go wait near the back gate. And I did. Just in time, the fire alarm went off, and all officers guarding the gate ran to that direction. A few seconds later, the back gate suddenly opened and the CCTV went off, and I just slid through easily. Luckily, I arrived home before Ellis did. My heart was pounding when I knocked on the door. Then mom and dad opened it. Needless to say, <gasps> seeing their daughter dressed as a boy soldier was a huge shock. I quickly explained to them how I'd secretly taken Jack's place, and their faces kept turning darker and darker. How could you lie to us, then illegally enter an all-boys military school? What were you thinking? Right then, Jack, my twin, rushed down the stairs. He immediately got what was going on and backed me up. Mom, Dad, this has been Taylor's dream ever since she was little. This is dangerous. If you get caught, you could be sent to a juvenile center. Pack your bags and quit the school right now. In that heated moment, Ellis barged in. Jacob? Jacob! Are you here? Where did you hide him? I tried to calm him, but it was no use. The whole scene was chaotic. Then suddenly, he stopped dead, staring at the stairs. Huh? Someone else was here. Someone with silky, long hair. A beautifully made-up face in a super pretty dress. It was... Jacob. He apologized to my parents for his brother's behavior. Then we all sat down as he told us how he realized from a young age that he was interested in feminine things. So he used to sneak into his mom's closet and use her clothes and makeup. One time, his parents caught him and they were so worried about his deviant behavior, they forced him to attend military school, hoping to straighten him up. But of course, he didn't fit in there and was fed up with being teased by Eric. So when he saw a chance to run away, he did so without hesitation, cutting off all ties with the school and his family. Luckily, the walkers found him in the woods and took great care of him. Still, it wasn't enough. He needed to discover his true self. So we came to Jack's. I beg of you, don't make me go back home again. I can't stand the disappointed look on mom and dad's faces. I just want to be myself. I know it must be hard, but you gotta go home and face your parents. Once they know how you truly feel, they'll understand. Mom, dad, I'm sorry for being so reckless, but being a soldier is my dream. Please give me a chance. <sighs> I can't let you do it. But you can have till the end of the semester to pack your stuff and say your goodbyes. That's it. Just then, I heard footsteps outside. It was... Ivy. What was she doing here? You tricked me. I already knew there was something weird going on with you and Ellis. But you're a... Girl? 
<laughs> Lucky me, I had your whole secret recorded here. Let's see how my dad punishes you, fraud. This is bad. Ellis and I jumped into his car and drove back to the school immediately. But we arrived back to an unexpected situation. The principal, aka Eric's dad, was already packing his things. And a strange lady with a stern look was sitting at his desk. Wait, did this mean we had a new principal? Yep, turns out the inspection officer came to school to investigate our principal on allegations that he'd been condoning his son's mistreatment of other students. And it was none other than Ellis here who had been gathering up evidence to help him. Then what about me? Well, in return for Ellis's assistance, the officer decided to let me stay and study here. In fact, the new principal even had some other plans. Finally, it's the end of the semester. Whew. And you know what? Our school now officially welcomes female students, which means I'm legitimately the first girl in school. I'm so grateful for our new principal. Meanwhile, me, Henry, and Tom are still the best of comrades. Obviously, nothing could ever stand between us. And of course, my parents are okay with me staying since I don't have to hide my real identity anymore. About Jacob, he actually listened to Jack's advice and went home to talk to his parents. They were shocked to see him like that, but as he poured his heart out to them, they decided to slowly accept the real him. As for his brother, Ellis, we went through a lot together, and now we're best friends. There might be some sparks between us though, but I don't know. Let's just wait and see. Oh god, my Roger. Look at him. Those chiseled features and dreamy eyes. No wonder every girl swoon at the sight of him, and of course, me, his biggest fan, is no exception. <sighs> You're probably wondering how I got into the backstage area of a star actor like Roger, right? It's simple. His makeup artist is Hannah, and she just so happens to be my big sister. Of course, I had to beg her for days to let me tag along. That's why I have to embrace every second of being this close to my celebrity crush. Hey, are you taking pictures of me? Oh no, busted. I was stammering, trying to come up with some excuse, when to my surprise, Roger lifted my phone and took a selfie. Here you go, baby girl. Next time, just ask. Oh my, there's no denying that Roger is boyfriend material. The girls from my class will definitely be turning green once they know this. Oh, he wants some orange juice? No problem, Roger. Just call me your own personal genie. Then I rushed around to find some OJ and hurried backstage to give it to him. But too late, his other fangirls had beat me to it. There were enough juices for him to drink all year round now. Sadly, I turned around to leave, but accidentally bumped into someone. Holy moly, it's Roger! He smiled at me and looked down at the cup of fresh orange juice in my hands. May I borrow your OJ? This is my number if you need it. What does this mean? Have I, an ordinary girl, caught the eye of the hottest guy on the planet? Ouch! This is clearly not a dream! For the rest of the evening, I tried composing the perfect message to him. Ugh, why was it so hard? I must have typed and deleted it at least 100 times. Oh no! I just pressed the send button by accident! Before I could remove that message, he already replied. That's it. There's no turning back now. I tried to calm myself down and went with the flow, which then led us to hours of long conversation. And soon, we were talking every day. One day, out of the blue, he said he wanted us to have a private date. Does that mean our relationship has moved on to the next level? <coughs> our first date was at this low-key diner with very few customers. I disguised myself just like what Roger told me to and waited for him. <sighs> but it's been an hour in vain. Did he really stand me up? I glumly got up to leave when a sweaty, out-of-breath Roger appeared. Turns out he struggled to lose his security guards just to come and see me. Aww. It's so sweet that he went to all this effort for a normal girl like me. No need for a fancy restaurant nor extravagant gifts. This diner was already the most romantic, as I had a real gentleman right here. Don't wake me up from this dream ever. Then, before we parted, he gently put a daisy bracelet on my wrist. Dating in secret is pretty exciting, right babe? Oh boy. This proved that I was no longer just a mere fangirl having a crush on her idol. 
Yep, we were officially dating in secret. The next day, I arrived at school in the best mood ever. I was singing on the way to class when my friend Alba startled me. Hey, have you watched the new trailer for Roger's upcoming film? It's dope. I booked a ticket for the sneak show already. <laughs> That's nothing. I already got a slot at the movie premiere. Jealous much? Huh? <laughs> That's the power of a fan club's vice president. And for me, I just had the most romantic dinner date ever with Roger. Oh, of course, that's only what I wish I could say. In fact, I could just smile and then head on to my seat. <sighs> Keeping this secret is driving me crazy. But I guess dating an idol comes with a price, and I don't mind paying for it my whole life. <laughs> But okay, on top of all the secrecy, as y'all know, celebrities are always occupied, having no private time left. So we have to come up with inventive ways to get some alone time. Finally, Hannah had left. Let's see, hair, makeup, clothes, everything was perfect. No one seemed around. Now I needed to hurry to Roger's fan. Hey Hannah, why are you still here? Wow, look at you, all dressed up, huh? What's the occasion? <laughs> Oh, um, I just forgot my stuff. See ya. And then I rushed behind the vanity van. Phew, so close. It's a good thing I look a lot like my sister and have picked up some great makeup tips from her, so it's a piece of cake for me to pretend to be Hannah and sneak into the filming site. <laughs> Let me see if you're my adorable Harper. While praising my excellent disguise, Roger suddenly went silent. Then he turned into a completely different person. His attitude changed. He pushed me away, poured his coffee onto his shoes, and started yelling at me. What on earth are you doing? Do you know how much these cost? Clean them. What just happened? I reached my arm out and asked if I'd upset him, but a woman swung my hand away. Take your filthy hand off my son. Oh, it's Roger's mom, Mrs. Walker, the chairwoman of the film production company, known by the entire industry for being a bossy lady who always caused others difficulties. Worse still, the buzzing sound outside also started growing louder. Oh no, I better not cause any trouble here. So I kept my gaze at the ground and frantically apologized. Suddenly, a hand grabbed my arm and pulled me away. It was Danielle, Roger's manager. Don't be bothered too much if he acted a little off. He was just too stressed from work. I'm Roger's older sister, by the way. We were super close, so I understand him better than anyone. Oh, MG, I didn't know he had an older sister. <laughs> but I know about you. Every time he sees you, his eyes fill with happiness. It's kind of obvious. Oh, um, we... You don't have to say anything. I'll keep your love story a secret. It turned out that Danielle knew everything and didn't say a word because she knew it would embarrass us. After that, she drove me home and we exchanged numbers. Roger wasn't being very responsive, so it was nice having Danielle to talk to, as she was very supportive of our relationship and kept me up to date with the schedule. A whole week has passed since that day with no reply from Roger. Nothing. Not a single phone call. I also texted his new phone number that Danielle gave me, but still zilch. Sometimes, I don't know if I really have a boyfriend or not. I just want to experience what other couples have. <sighs> Stop wasting your time fantasizing about a guy far out of your league. It's so tragic, especially now he has a girlfriend. He's totally betrayed us. What did she just say? Girlfriend? I hurriedly went online and saw a photo of Roger and Jessica, a hot singer, looking cozy backstage. So he was ghosting me to be with her? My heart felt like it was going to burst into flames. I immediately texted Danielle and she replied straight back, complaining that she was also having a headache with Jess's dirty PR tricks to promote her new album. Oh, phew. So it's just a silly rumor. What a relief. Besides, for the past few days, Roger hadn't contacted me at all because he'd been busy filming a new movie in Paris. He would be back soon, and he was gonna hold a small meet and greet downtown. Danielle suggested I should show up and surprise him, and she even cleared up Roger's schedule that day so we could go on a date after the event. Wonderful, Danielle! That day, I went to the meet and greet and disguised myself so perfectly that Roger wouldn't recognize me. He would be so surprised to see me here. 
To be honest, I don't like my man doing all those kinds of air kisses or hugs with fans, but, well, that's his job. And I should be understanding. Besides, I used to fall for these sweet gestures as a fan too. Roger, are any of these dating rumors true? Well, I just thought, you know, I'm better off focusing on my work and you guys. You're my true supporters. Unlike all the girls out there who only approach me for fame and money. What does he mean? So he just sees me as one of those cloud-chasing girls out there? I seem to be out of breath among the excited howls of his fans and I couldn't stay here much longer. I was sobbing as I ran outside, thinking about how Roger actually thought of me, of us, all this time. Suddenly, a car stopped in front of me. It was Danielle. I know it's hard being in love with a celebrity, but from a fan's perspective, that's something they want to hear from him. Of course, he can't speak up about his real relationship, but you can. You mean, there's nothing wrong with your love, and we have plenty of other ways to express it discreetly, right? What Danielle said got me thinking. Sophie teases me every day for dreaming about dating my idol, but this relationship is real, and I have the right to show off my love, right? So, I posted my favorite picture from one of our dates on Instagram as a way to pour my heart out. The next morning, I woke up to see an angry text from Roger. Harper, why did you break our promise? Why did you disclose our relationship? Things are a mess now. Underneath, it was the link to a tweet along with the title, Young actor Roger is suspected of dating someone 10 years his senior. Oh no 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 no, how did they find my photo that quickly? And worse, they must have mistaken the person in the picture to be my sister, Hannah. Well, at least my sister is on vacation, so she hasn't found out about this yet. I must fix this before she comes back, or else she's gonna kill me. I tried to contact both Roger and Danielle, but got no response. What to do? Ah, Roger is having a press conference for his new movie. I'll go there and talk to him directly. I used Hannah's pass card to rush backstage in the hope Roger would be there, but wait, there's only Mrs. Walker and her staff. You better clean up this scandal immediately. Don't let it affect the conference. So annoying. That makeup artist must be using some tricks to take advantage of Roger. Now she will know what it's like to have her career ruined. Oh no, I can't let that happen. Please don't do this. It's not Hannah in the picture. It was me, her sister. Roger and I are in love. <laughs> I never said I loved you. So stop making a fool of yourself. Sorry, mom. I was just playing around with her because I was bored. Let me handle this. What? I thought he was different. Turns out he's just another jerk who uses fame to flirt with girls. We're over. I shouted then sprinted out of there. For days after that, more Twitter videos were posted from Roger's alleged staff claiming he was arrogant and rude. It serves him right, I guess. However, I began to wonder about the fact that there weren't a lot of people there at those moments. Who could have been the one taking those videos? Suddenly, a Twitter notification popped up and brought me back to reality. Wait, it's that account, isn't it? The fans were still furious with Roger. Scrolling through the articles about him, I saw a bunch of comments telling everyone to cancel him. They even shared a picture of Roger going to bars and getting drunk the night before his apology press conference. Even though I was mad at him, I couldn't just switch off my feelings. So I took an Uber to the bar to find Roger, but because of my age, the security guard stopped me. As I was trying to find a way to sneak inside, I saw a familiar figure. It was Roger, sitting on the steps of the bar's back door. Hey, you alright? I'll call Danielle to come pick you up. No, please. I'm too tired of having bodyguards and a manager follow me 24-7. I just want to be alone now. Harper, I'm sorry for hurting you all this time. I just want to say, it was real. I really do love you. I did what I did because I was so worried that my adoptive mom would harm you if she knew about us. Your adoptive mom? Yeah. I'm not Mrs. Walker's biological son. She recognized my acting talent, so she adopted me when I was 11. Since then, I've been nothing more than a money-making machine to her. He then told me how his pure passion for acting was starting to be worn out by all these pressures of being a celebrity, especially now that he knew someone was behind all the recent scandals. 
I know who's behind it all, so do show up at the press conference as planned and I'll take care of the rest. I waited for Roger to finish his apology for all the scandals, then I went up to address the crowd. All of the rumors are fake. I know this because I'm the girl from the video, and the person who filmed and edited it to make it look bad was his manager, Danielle. I pointed to her and amidst the gasps, all eyes and cameras shifted to her. Wh what This is slander. You have no proof. Then I held up my phone and played a video recording of Sophie admitting that Danielle was giving her the videos to upload on the internet. Actually, on the presentation day, Sophie accidentally revealed her secret Twitter account, which was none other than at Cancel Roger, the one of the so-called staff. So I confronted her right away and told her that she could be sued for defaming others. When I first heard the rumor about Roger having a girlfriend, I was blinded by jealousy so I listened to Danielle. Given that she's his manager, how could I not believe that those videos were true? As his fan club vice president, I had my members' best interests at heart, so please, don't sue me. Fine, it was me. So what? I need to show mom that Roger is not as special as she thinks she is. I knew Roger liked Harper, so I approached her and used the relationship to ruin his career. Then mom would finally notice me. Whoa, what a twist, right? So what now? Well, Mrs. Walker and Daniel's true intentions were exposed for all to see. This cleared Roger of all the scandals and his fans are all back together to support him again. He has a new manager now and they have no problem with him publicly dating me. Oh, and as for Hannah, arriving back from her trip to discover she'd been dating one of her celebrity clients didn't go down too well with her. <laughs> But it's not all bad, since she now has loads of bookings after this scandal. So if anything, she has me to thank for being more in demand than ever. Wow, it's been a busy day at the salon. What can I say? It's all thanks to my top-notch hairstyling talent. Ta-da! What did you do to my hair? Platinum blonde is the current trend, ma'am. I, I asked for brown! How can I go to school looking like this? Ugh, she has no eye for beauty. <sighs> but, oh no, this dumb machine. <sighs> At least it's not completely burned. Were you dosing off while cutting my hair? Give us our money back now. Money? I've only worked here for a week. How am I supposed to pay them back? Ask my parents? No way. I, the beautiful Olivia, had declared in front of them that I hated school and would build my own career through my passion for hairstyling. Not with any of those boring books. So, I left my hometown and got a job at this fancy hair salon in the big city. I would prove to my parents that I could actually earn money with my talent. Ugh, but now my boss was going berserk at me. Oh, dearie me. There's no need to make a fuss over such a measly amount of money. I shall pay for it on her behalf. I turned around and wow, it was this graceful looking middle-aged woman. Her outfit, hairstyle, and manners all screamed elegance and luxury. Pretty girl, I can see that you have a keen eye for beauty. The only thing you're missing is an experienced mentor's guidance, and I happen to know someone. I can't believe it. Mr. Fullington, the world's number one hairstylist, was going to be my mentor. Of course, it's all thanks to this awesome lady. Oh, wait, mom. I should call her mom now, as she's just adopted me. She must have taken a liking to me seeing how determined I was, pursuing my passion despite all hardship. She and her husband are millionaires who couldn't have children, so yeah, they decided to take me in. Man, this is the best thing to happen to me ever. Olivia, school isn't the only way to success. With your talent, the road can be much shorter. My foster parents are so kind. Just look at this room. I feel like a princess. Just look at this gigantic bed, satin sheets, and walk-in closet. Better still, they even arranged for a makeup artist and a stylist to spend all day helping me look fabulous. The rich kid's life sure was sweet. I was so immersed in all of it that I almost forgot the main reason why I agreed to do this. The hairstyling course with Mr. Fullington. Mom, Dad, I know that you're both very busy, but I've been waiting so long. Has Mr. Fullington forgot about our appointment? Oh, sweetie, I'm sorry, but he's been sick, so his schedule has all been put off till next month. Don't worry, darling. In the meantime, why don't you try attending some fancy parties on our behalf? 
it's a good chance to expand your social circle and learn how to make money from all the best. Oh, that sounds pretty good. If I could make lots of money, then my parents would have to take me seriously and stop their stupid go-back-to-school demands. As soon as I arrived at the party, all these new friends gathered around and complimented on how beautiful I looked. The rich guys went crazy for me, too. I instantly became the center of attention. This one guy called Bruce introduced himself as the son of the CEO to the top media corporation in the US. Olivia, that exquisite face of yours was made for the big screen. You should play the leading role in our new movie. Oh, acting? I'd never thought about it before. Hmm, walking down the red carpet and posing in front of hundreds of cameras didn't sound appealing. It's worth a try, right? I was still stunned at Bruce's offer when I felt something cool on my finger. Oh my gosh, a sparkly red diamond ring? William, heir to the GeoGems Limited. Pleasure to meet you, Olivia. Please consider this my greeting gift. And this continued all evening, until I couldn't hold any more stuff. Flowers from Justin, a jewelry set from Andrew, a perfume collection from Antony, and this watch from… geez, I couldn't remember anymore. I was trying to slip away when a handsome guy blocked me. You're stunning, Olivia. Can I see you tomorrow? A date? I didn't even know him. No, no. What a pity. I'm meeting my old friends at West High tomorrow. Sorry, it's not that I'm picky or anything, but dating can't be that easy, right? Phew, finally home. What an eventful evening. Just then, I got a call from Minnie, my best friend. Minnie told me that some mean girls at school were spreading rumors that I stole money from my parents, then packed up and ran away. Okay then, let them tittle-tattle. Tomorrow, I'll show those meanies who's the real deal. Yay, it's so nice to see Minnie again. We immediately chatted non-stop about all kinds of things. Then suddenly, the hyenas appeared with the same sarcastic tone as usual. Wow, counterfeit goods are so well made these days. You know, your supposedly Birkin bag is extremely rare. There's only five of those on Earth, right? Busted! How much do supercar hourly rentals and bodyguards cost nowadays, little miss show-off? Minnie was going to defend me, but I stopped her. No need to waste time arguing with these people. <laughs> I then grasped Minnie's hand to leave, but look, Olivia! I looked up. There was an airplane flying at very close range, and it was writing something? O L I V. The white smoke actually spelled out m my name! I've only seen this in movies! I gasped in shock as the plane landed, and stepping out of the cockpit was the guy at the party last night, Nathan. Turns out, he was the youngest pilot in America, and wanted to impress me with this grand gesture after being rejected yesterday. Flying in the sky is my passion. And, Olivia, I want to be your personal pilot, taking you wherever you want. Oh my goodness, I don't know what was better. Having a rich, handsome guy going out of his way to impress me, or seeing the astonished looks on my fake friend's faces. <sighs> Such thrilling days like this should have made me happy, right? But sitting among this mountain of expensive gifts, I couldn't shake this uneasy feeling. Being the center of smitten eyes and receiving countless compliments and gifts was cool and all, but Minnie's words awakened me. Olivia, do you think they really are generous enough to give you all this? without asking for anything in return? No, I shouldn't accept these pricey items. I was putting them all back in their boxes to return them when my foster mom walked in. Oh no, darling. Returning gifts is considered very insulting in our society. <sighs> the world of the rich is so complicated. So I listened to her and dismissed the idea of returning those presents. But I should still return the favor, right? So I agreed to meet some of them. The first person must be the one who impressed me the most, Nathan the pilot. His airplane hangar was where we had our first date. I couldn't find anything bad about Nathan, but we just didn't click. He kept on rambling about planes, which model each was, how hard it was for him to get them, blah blah blah, while I had no interest in any of this. The next guy, William, was even worse. He not only invited me, but also dozens of other beautiful girls. He even gave each girl a gem stone from his collection. A true player, so obviously a skip. Bruce was easier to talk to, 
But I soon realized that he had a problem. This set of glassware was custom made by the most skillful craftsman in Switzerland. It's yours if you like. Oh, wait. I'll have someone bring them over later. Look at this beautiful painting. Wouldn't it be perfect in your bedroom? Ah, but it's too big for you to carry home. I'll send it over later. What about my leading role in the movie you mentioned? <laughs> I almost forgot. But, Olivia, acting is not as easy as you think. Besides, the entertainment industry is really toxic. Please just be my princess, okay? See? He kept promising me the world and then... nothing. What a boastful, stingy liar. I didn't like any of these guys, so I must return their expensive gifts. But as soon as I carried the boxes out of the room, my foster mom stopped me. My silly Olivia, why are you so concerned about this? To them, these things are merely a drop in the ocean. But if you feel uncomfortable, I'll keep them out of sight for you. Giving them back will bring shame to our family. And you don't want that, do you? All right, that seemed like the best solution. My foster parents had been so nice to me, I shouldn't cause them any trouble. But a few days later, I discovered that they had secretly used my phone to ask Bruce for more presents. He thought I was angry, so he promised me a huge surprise tomorrow. It's weird. Why did they do that? They're as rich as Bruce's family, aren't they? I asked them why, and turned out my foster parents just wanted to test Bruce, as he seemed to be the most persistent in pursuing me, but had not shown his sincerity. Early next morning, I received a call from Bruce, saying that he'd sent someone over with a luxurious car, and reminded me about our date tonight. Wait, an entire car? That's too much this time! I was about to tell him to keep it when my foster father rushed in, saying that my parents were seriously ill. Oh gosh. I quickly hung up the phone and immediately went back to my hometown. Dear God, please protect my parents. Surprisingly, my mom opened the door looking perfectly fine. And there was dad as healthy as can be watching TV. Ah, oh, thank goodness. My foster dad must have made a mistake. It's been a while since I was home, so I decided to stay the night. And as we were having some family time, I got another call from Bruce. Oh no, I forgot to cancel our date. And now he's at the mansion waiting for me. The problem was, Bruce couldn't find his sports car anywhere and kept on making a fuss about it. I tried calling my foster parents to resolve this, but I couldn't contact them the whole evening. The morning after, I returned to the mansion to find strangers going in and out. Um, what are you all doing? Hi, we're moving in. Great to meet you, neighbor. It's such a catch to find a good place like this up for rent at reasonable prices, right in the local newspaper, am I right? For rent? No, 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 what on earth is going on? I rushed into my foster parents' bedroom, but it was empty. Even the gifts they said they'd keep for me were all gone. They left without a trace, as if they were running away. What, did your partners in crime leave you? Now don't you dare deny it, you fraud. What did he say? Partners in crime? Fraud? I tried explaining to him how I wanted to return all the gifts I received, but he wouldn't believe me. He threatened to call the cops if he didn't get his car back. Oh no, no way that's gonna happen. All I could do was beg Bruce to give me some time. This is the home of our town's famous sheriff. He's the only person who could help me, but all I got was, I'm sorry, but I'm retired. You're gonna have to ask someone else. What to do now? I was freaking out when, out of nowhere, no need for my dad. This is a piece of cake. I can give you a hand. I turned around to see a guy leaning on the door with a cold, arrogant look, and his arms crossed. Who is this guy? Can he really help me? We'll see. Wow, Alan really took the risk and invested a lot in this. A sports car, a mansion, expensive trips, and even this huge event. I have to admit, he looks quite handsome being all dressed up. Oh, I forgot to tell you, Alan, Yep, the sheriff's son is playing the rich heir of a big corporation chasing after a beautiful young lady, which is me. However, I didn't expect things would turn out so real. Alan's pursuit of me even made it on the local news. You guys must be curious how someone who's not a millionaire did this. Well, Alan convinced Bruce to fund our plan. He was hesitant at first, but he soon realized that this was the only way to catch the frauds and get his stuff back. So, reluctantly, he agreed. Alan is indeed a genius, 
and his well-thought-out strategy quickly got the fish hooked. We were making headlines everywhere, and I finally received a text from my so-called foster mom. At first, she was just asking how I was doing, and talked about how busy they were with overseas projects. Until today. Olivia, how's it going with that mysterious millionaire boyfriend of yours? He seems willing to give you anything. So you will consider him, won't you, darling? As expected, these money-hungry crooks wouldn't let it slide once they heard millionaire. So I replied to her that my rich man was treating me well and wanted to throw an extravagant feast this weekend to officially announce our relationship. And I hoped my parents could put off their business trip and come join us. Tonight was the night. Gosh, I was so nervous as my mom didn't reply to that message of mine. Will they show up or did they sense something was off? While I was super nervous, Alan came to me and held my hand real tight. Don't worry, Olivia. Everything will work out as planned. My, my. What is this feeling? It's undeniable that I always feel so safe being with Alan. The party finally began. Alan proposed to me with this rare, precious surrenderby gem on a ring, which is one of the only three existing in the whole world. Everyone started buzzing. Alan's acting was so perfect, from his eye contact to the words he said, that I couldn't help but feel butterflies in my stomach. I... I do. When the party was over and all the guests left, I received a call from my foster mom telling me to go to the back gate. As predicted, they offered to keep the engagement ring for me. Drop the act, frauds! The two were still processing what was happening when the cops barged in and arrested them. It worked! Can't believe I've successfully tricked these notorious scammers. <laughs> what about my car? My Bugatti? Where is it? Oh, I almost forgot the main sponsor for this perfect plan. Without him, we definitely couldn't pull this off. Our stingy millionaire, Bruce Dillon. I bet there hasn't been a single day gone by that he didn't think about his missing gifts, huh? <laughs> that reminds me. This sparkling, precious ring, too. I quickly took it off, passed it to Alan, and told him to give it back to Bruce. But the minute the surrender by ring left my finger, Alan put on something else. Oh my god, another ring? Your role as a millionaire's girlfriend may be over, but will you be a girlfriend to an ordinary guy like me, Olivia? Yes! A million times yes! After all this mess, I now realize that I've still got a lot of learning to do. So I've decided to listen to my parents and finish school. Turns out, if I really paid attention in class, it's actually pretty interesting. And Minnie is still my amazing BFF, who let me have free reign to experiment on her hair. And of course, this cute future detective too. Babe! Time to change your hairstyle! It's finally the first day at the aquarium. And to say I'm nervous is an understatement. Stay calm, you can do this. <sighs> You're Ariel, not Naira. I'm headstrong, spirited, and... Okay, let's get into character. Bright smile, check. Friendly manner, check. Ariel's accent, check. I was a dazzling mermaid and even let the little kids stick their stickers on my fishtail while I answered a bazillion questions about Atlantica and my Prince Eric. The last visitor was the sweetest little girl who handed me a collectible box of cutlery as a gift. Oh my, such a lovely comb, but it looks rare. Are you sure your guardians would agree to this? Of course, my brother always says yes to me. The little girl signaled someone in the crowd to come over and it was Arson? As in the cutest boy from school? Naira, oh my god. Your take on Ariel is spot on. I didn't know there was a side of you. I... What are you talking about? I know not of this Naira. Feeling the panic rise in me, I lifted my fishtail costume and ran with my two feet as all the kids stared in shock. I'd never wanted to disappoint those kids, but I had the biggest crush on Arson, and no way had I expected him to be there and see me like this. <sighs> At school, I was a loser, a nobody. Yet, when I was acting, I felt invincible. At least, I did until my timid, introverted side got in the way of my performing dreams. That day, our drama club mentor announced our school play this year would be Legally Blonde. I loved that movie so much, and I already knew all the lines. I couldn't let this opportunity pass me by, so when the mentor asked who wanted to audition as the lead, Elle Woods, I took all the courage and raised my hand. 
the whole room fell silent and suddenly burst into laughter. Oh, please, how could a loser like you play the glamorous Elle Woods? Worst of all, the mentor agreed with her and said that I might be better suited for the nail lady role. And then she said the lead should go to someone who's outgoing and influential, like Eliza. What? Eliza's got the emotional range of a teaspoon. I gotta get this role. So I waited until the end of the meeting and then spoke to the mentor in private. I'm sorry, but I can't cast an Elle Woods with stage fright. Naira, I'll consider giving you the role, but only if you can prove to me that you can do this without your fear getting the better of you. So, try practicing by going out in public and interacting with strangers. Get yourself comfortable in front of a crowd. Can you do that? Feeling determined, I went to look for some kind of social experiment right away. And that's why I applied for this job at the aquarium. But I never thought anyone from class would show up. Least of all, Arson. He even caught up with me at school the next day, insisting he saw me at the aquarium. And typical me, being all fidgety and shy, I blurted out, maybe you mistook me for my twin sister, Cora. Oh, in that case then, can I get her number? Or can you like, arrange for me to go on a date with her? The way she glowed with confidence was amazing. Wow, I didn't expect him to be that into my acting. How ironic. Wait, what if I continue to play Cora and go on a date with him? I could practice my acting as this unapologetically outgoing girl while spending time with him? Tempting, right? Okay, wait at the book cafe near school on Sunday, 3 p.m. I'll tell Cora about it. I'd been preparing for this date the whole week. After watching multiple tutorials on YouTube, I was finally able to put together this bold look. All that's left to do was to wear Cora's self-confidence to match it. So I did a Bella Hadid runway strut into the cafe, straight past the gawping onlookers and over to Arson's seat and interrupted him from his reading. Hi, is that a Rick Riordan's book? Uh, yeah, Heroes of Olympus. Are you a fan of Riordan too? Are you kidding me? I've read all of his works. Yes, Breaking the Ice, success. We connected over our shared love of fantasy novels and other nerdy things. I didn't want the date to ever end, so I invited him along to a secret place of mine. I covered his eyes until we got there. Being the cute guy he was, he went along with it, even though he looked unsure about what was happening. When I turned the lights on and the ice rink appeared, his face lit up. Then the snow began to fall. It felt like a scene out of Frozen. Then we went onto the ice and... Arson fell straight onto his butt. <laughs> Stop laughing, this is my first time, okay? Aww, embarrassed Arson was so cute. <laughs> I helped him up and it was the first time our hands touched. I led him around the rink and taught him some moves. When I looked at him, I saw him looking back at me with this big grin on his face. Then suddenly he pulled me in, and I fell right into his embrace. Our faces were so close, and I swore we were about to kiss. Ugh! Overcome with nerves, I pushed him away, and he lost his balance and fell flat on the ice. But he jumped up to his feet right away and skated after me. Oh, don't let me catch you, or else... Let's see you try. <laughs> Yesterday felt like a dream. We texted each other non-stop up until the last class of the day, P.E. My eyes were still glued to my phone when a flying ball hit my knee. It was from Eliza. Right after that, another one came and knocked my glasses off. I shielded myself with my arms and hoped it would go away soon, and surprisingly, it did. Only, Arson was standing in front of me, blocking all the balls. Arson, what are you doing there? We were just playing around. <laughs> Playing around? Can't you see you're hurting her? Then Arson turned to me and asked me if I was okay. Could this be it? Did he realize I was the girl he went on a date with? Uh, thank you for helping me out. You're my friend, and also Cora's sister, so I've got to look out for you, right? Oh, he didn't recognize me. That meant my acting was flawless, right? Then why did I feel so uneasy about it? As uncomfortable as I felt about the situation, I also liked Arson way too much to stop it. So I continued pretending to be Cora. He acted so lovey-dovey on our dates and it made my heart melt. But at school, he only saw me as Cora's helpless, clumsy sister. He talked about her constantly and stared blankly into space as if there were an imaginary Cora there. It started bugging me that Arson only liked the confident, fun, and spontaneous heroine I'd created, not coy Naira. <sighs> I couldn't blame him though. If I didn't find myself lovable, Maybe that's why mom left me and didn't bother to write or to call. I couldn't do this anymore. 
I couldn't feed Arson with false expectations of an unreal character, so I typed out a text to Arson telling him that Cora was on her way to study abroad for three years and that this relationship wouldn't work. Arson kept texting back, non-stop, and even came to my house to look for Cora and broke down in tears when I told him she'd already left. I felt so bad, but that was the only way for him to stop fantasizing about Cora. Over time, his pain would fade, right? From that day on, Arson always looked for me at school and consistently asked about her. This didn't go unnoticed by Eliza, who was clearly green with envy. Lunchtime came, and Eliza, along with her minions, suddenly approached me. Why so lonely? Has Arson abandoned you? <laughs> I tried to ignore her and eat my lunch, but she wouldn't leave me alone. Fine then, I'll lend you a hand. Arson, hi! Did you know that Naira here is so obsessed with you? She even admits that she loves to follow you everywhere like a stalker. How creepy. Huh? What was this girl saying? Now people were staring at me, judging me for something that wasn't even true. I was done with being Naira, the loser. If only... Yeah, if only Cora's personality helped me stand up for myself. Shut up! Me and Arson are friends, so what? Why do you have to make stuff up about me? Is it because you're jealous of me? Oh, what? Me? Jealous of you? You like Arson, don't you? I feel sorry for you, really. You're gonna pick on everyone he talks to? How pathetic. Just like that, people made disapproving comments at Eliza. She couldn't do anything other than run away in shame. While I suddenly received praise for standing up against the school's tyrant, people seemed to love this new side of me. So perhaps it was a good time to give myself a makeover. The next day at school, I started dressing up boldly and wearing contact lenses instead of nerdy glasses. My classmates seemed to like my new look. My drama club mentor changed her attitude towards me as well. I even applied for the student council and my popularity grew, and so did my friendship circle. The world opened up to me, but weirdly, being around people all the time just felt uncomfortable and exhausting. I couldn't really talk to any of them, as we weren't even close. I just felt so left out. When it came to a charity date auction, being on the council committee meant that I was appointed a bachelorette. That meant everyone joining this event would bid to take me on a date, and that bidding money would go to the school's fund to build a new cafeteria. That's how I ended up here, on stage at the auction. I tried my best to act cool to raise as much money as possible. The boys kept cheering for me, trying to show their charms, and I tried to flirt back by talking nonsense and winking at them. Once the bidding started, chaos commenced as people kept raising their paddle numbers. 40, 60, 80. It suddenly came to me that I didn't want to go on dates with any of these guys. I didn't know them at all. And just then, Arson shouted from the back. 500. 500 going once, going twice, and sold. Arson jumped on stage, grabbed my hand, and dragged me out of there. He led me to the garden, and then he started asking me tons of questions. What is it with you lately? It's as if you're someone else. N no way. I'm just the same old Naira. Tell me the truth. Are you... Cora? You switch places with your sister to protect her, right? Oh, Cora, I've missed you so much. After all this time, he was still in love with Cora. Even now when I changed myself, he still didn't see me as Naira? Arson, I... I can't. And then I just ran out of there. After a night of crying myself to sleep, I was back at school and found myself summoned to the principal's office with a smirking Eliza. There she showed the principal a video recording of my conversation with Arson last night, which was proof that someone else had been replacing me at school. If this was true, I could be expelled. Oh no, 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 panic. I blurted out a lie that I had bipolar and that sometimes I switched to the other persona and acted up. The principal seemed confused. But then she insisted I go to the school therapist. <sighs> I had no choice but to agree. And it was actually really good for me. Through talking to the therapist, I could finally open up about my past. Ever since I was a kid, I've always been super shy. I thought it was why my mom left me behind when she split from dad and moved out. She hadn't even contacted me once. I know a childish nerd like me would never be the one who she could really talk to. Thank God my dad came to pick me up after that. The thought of facing my so-called friends on the bus was making me nauseous. Were you that unhappy not having your mother around? 
I just don't know why she left me behind without a word. Was I a loser in her eyes? Honey, listen. Mom loves you. And the reason you didn't receive any letters from her was because I hid them all from you. What? Why would you do that? Because I was so broken after your mom left that I thought it would be better if you and I could forget everything about her. I... I'm sorry. Don't you know how terrible I felt about myself all those years just because of your selfishness? I ran into the house immediately. I couldn't look at him right now, only to see Mom and Cora were sitting in the living room. Both rushed towards me and pulled me in for a hug. Yeah, the Cora character wasn't entirely made up. Instead, I based her on my real life twin sister. The little five-year-old me always struck by Cora's side hid behind her dress while she boldly stood up against anyone who dared to pick on me. I'd always looked up to her. Turned out, when Dad got the call from school, he realized his actions had caused me pain, so he did everything in his power to contact Mom and brought her and Cora from LA to here. Mom kept apologizing to me, saying she regretted every minute of leaving me behind. Seeing them all break down in tears like that ached my heart, but it gave me this warm feeling at the same time. After all this time, my family feud was finally resolved. Just at that moment, the doorbell rang. It's Arson! Naira, is that your boyfriend? What? I dragged him away immediately, and this time I admitted the whole truth to him. I told him how I lied that the girl in the aquarium was Cora, because I didn't think he'd like the real me, as I wasn't a confident presence. But my feelings for him were real, and that's why I tried so hard to get close to him. But I figured now that he knew the truth, it'd be over, so I'd just walk away. Finally, I'm back. I've been in LA for an entire winter break to spend more time with Mom and Cora and to figure myself out. I've realized that being an introvert is nothing to be self-conscious about. I'm observant, and that'll help a lot of my acting passion, right? This semester, I'll definitely try to impress my drama club mentor. No boys will ever distract me again. And that's when I spotted Arson waving at me with a huge bouquet in his hand. Arson, what are you doing here? I thought you were still mad at me. Well, I thought about it a lot, and honestly, things between us got messy, so I'd like to get to know you again. Only this time, please can it be the real you, as I really want to know what Naira's about. What do you say? Um, yeah, I'd love that. Hey Beans, welcome back to my channel. I'm so cranked to introduce today's special guest, my daughter Elle. Say hi, sweetie. Hi, we're making butter from scratch today. I'm so excited. Elle, can you please do this properly? Mom, it's the sixth take already. I can't even fill my arms anymore. If you're still not satisfied, then film it yourself. Hey, I'm Elle, a high school student living in Wisconsin with my mom. From the outside, there's nothing out of the ordinary about us. Well, except that my mom's a vintage holic. See, she in fact became a famous YouTuber for her 1950s lifestyle. Living like this was such a hassle. But that's what puts food on our table, so I had to put up with it. However, sometimes mom even insisted that I join in her videos. Like today. Ugh. Not just that. Whenever we went out together, she made me wear the cheesiest vintage dresses. So I wouldn't ruin her aesthetic. As a hip-hop dancer, it was torture. See? I sure look way better in these clothes. Oh dear, what are those awful threats? Here, try this. It's really the bee's knees. Bee's knees, she said? More like granny. Ah, oh, so pretty! Auntie, you have such excellent taste. That's Daisy, my cousin. And also schoolmate. Who gets along much better with my mom? Jeez, I can't let this hideous dress go home with us. If you like this so much, why don't you just take it instead, Daisy? Mom then walked to the counter with some more tacky clothes, ready to pay, but... Gee, where did I put it? <sighs> I guess I'll come back another time. Oh, missing something, Mommy? It's okay, Mrs. Faye. You're a regular, so you can pay us next time. Wait, what? No! So, now I had to wear this ugly dress to the boring event Mom was dragging me to. Because the more, the merrier. On the way there, Mom was talking a blue steak about how I should behave at the bash, when suddenly, huh? What now? Awesome! This must be the third time this hunk of junk has broken down this month! Isn't it fantastic? And we don't even have phones to call for help! Elle, I've told you, it'd be ridiculous to show up with smartphones while dressing like this! 
Besides, people used to live just fine without them. Stop relying on them so much. Trust me, some nobleman will soon come to our rescue. Stay here and wait all you want. I'm gonna go look for a garage. But I only managed a couple of steps before a fancy car pulled over, and an old man in a suit stepped out and offered to help. Turns out he's one of Mom's subscribers and even asked for a picture. Thank you so much for saving my chariot. You're the ginchiest. Gosh, here she goes again with her old-timey slangs. Eventually, we reached this Anceville, and as soon as we arrived, Mom immediately ran to her celeb friends and posed for photos, leaving me lost and confused. While I was trying to navigate through this madness, some whispering caught my attention. Isn't that Faye? She's so extra! I can't even get past the first five minutes of her videos! Oh yeah? And still, Mom <laughs> thought the whole world was her fan. I don't get why she wanted to be here with these fake people that much! I was not having any of that stuffy place, so I went outside to get some air. As I wandered along the street, I spotted a group of teenagers dancing to old school hip hop. This is right up my alley. But wait, ugh, this stupid dress. My jam is coming on though. So letting my adrenaline take over, I joined the crowd. Everyone seemed impressed and even made room for me to shine. Then one of them joined me. I was really feeling it when a familiar screeching voice startled me. Elle, what on earth are you doing? Agitate the gravel now. Then mom dragged me to the car and drove me straight home. Gringles, do you understand that if anyone sees you like that, the perfect image I've built all these years will be in ruins? Pfft, then don't drag me into these things. Do it alone. Mind your manners. You should find something more practical rather than dancing like those good-for-nothing lazy bums. I'd had enough. Furious, I stormed into my room and stayed there all night. The next morning, I woke up to the rumbling sound of an empty stomach. When the coast was clear, I went downstairs to check the fridge for food. Ew, what's that rotten egg smell? Jesus, this fridge must be from Napoleon times! I reluctantly went for an instant soup, but the microwave wouldn't even heat it up. And guess what? My mom spent over $500 just for this thing's useless 50s look. Then I decided to put on a movie to blow off some steam. But the ancient TV wouldn't turn on either. Unbelievable! Is there anything in this rusty dollhouse that actually works? I need to get out of here before going insane. Oh, there's a new family moving in next door. Hang on, isn't that the guy I was dancing with last night? He smiled and waved at me, but I could only force a smile and nodded back. Hey, why the long face? If you're bored, come give me a hand. Then he dragged me over to his yard before I could reply. Once we're done, we rested on the front porch. Turns out his name was Royce. He'd just moved in with his dad and had enrolled at my school. I have to admit, he's quite the charmer, and within minutes, I felt comfortable enough to tell him about my unconventional life with mom. My mom has way too much free time. I wish she'd find a man. Only then she might quit nagging me. Meanwhile, my dad is always busy. If he had someone by his side, he'd want to spend more time with his family and be less of a workaholic. Wait a minute. So, how about we make them... A, a couple? couple. Today is the day. Our parents have really tight schedules, so planning out this date took a lot of effort. But so far, so good. I told my mom to check out this vintage-themed restaurant in town while Royce told his dad that he wanted some father-son bonding time. Then, oops, we accidentally bump into each other and join tables. Look at my mom, gracefully fixing her hair and acting all charming. <laughs> I winked at Royce and then we made an excuse to leave the table so the adults could have some private time. It's been a little while. Let's see how the two are doing. Goodness gracious, was Mr. Phillips slurping on the spaghetti? He's making a mess and mom seemed really embarrassed. We immediately rushed inside to save this date before it's too late. At the end of the evening, we thought the worst was behind us. Mr. Phillips walked out without holding the door open for mom, making it swing back in her face. Gosh, every beginning is difficult, I guess. Over the next few days, Royce and I beat our brains out to try and find a way to save their budding relationship, and came down to this. Mom, I twisted my ankle during practice. Can you please pick me up? Hey, Dad, I forgot my wallet at the practice room. Could you pick it up on the way home? Then we waited until our parents showed up and went inside to lock the door and even turn off the lights for dramatic effect. I immediately heard my mom's horrified scream. Then the room went quiet. 
I bet Mr. Phillips calmed her down. We waited a few minutes before calling the security guard to open the door. But contrary to our expectations, the one being hysterical was Mr. Phillips, who was now <laughs> sobbing in my mother's arms. Wait, what? Turns out Royce forgot that his dad, who always sleeps with a light on, is in fact nyctophobic. There goes plan B. This was bad. Everything kept going south and the clock was ticking as Royce's dad had to leave for another business trip soon. We can't accept defeat like this. There must be something your dad's really good at, right? I don't know, he's good at fixing stuff. Ha! <laughs> then we know what to do next. While mom was taking a shower, I waited for my plan to set in motion. Three, two, one. Ah! Elle, help me! I ran over to her to see water shooting out from a broken faucet. After a couple of minutes of struggle, I called Royce's house for help, AKA Mr. Phillips. As soon as he arrived, he went straight into the bathroom and helped mom out of that pool. He looked way too cool, just like Superman. Now, time for his forte to speak up. As expected, he fixed it all in a blink, and mom even invited the two of them to stay for dinner as a thank you. Great! During dinner, Mr. Phillips kept praising my mom's cooking. He admitted that this coziness reminded him of the good old days. Seeing things escalate between them, Royce and I finished quickly and excused ourselves to give them some time alone. My dad's right. I can't remember the last time we sat together, as a family. Then he told me that his parents divorced a few years back, and due to his dad's work, they were always moving from place to place, which really wore him out. Seeing his sad gaze made me feel so bad for him. I just wanted to give him a hug. Hold on. What nonsense was I thinking? I immediately brushed off that weird thought, and we chatted until late. The next day at school, I was talking to Royce as usual, when suddenly our conversation was interrupted. Oh my god, aren't you the new guy? How do you know him? Huh? Where did Daisy come from? And is befriending Royce something strange? Then she whispered to me that Royce's good looks hadn't gone unnoticed by other students. Wow, no wonder I kept feeling like we were being watched whenever we hung out at school. Daisy then proceeded to chime in between us and talk to Royce non-stop, even on our way home, when clearly her house was not in the same direction as ours. How annoying! But good news, back at home, mom seemed to be floating on air. I caught her humming along to love songs and she didn't nag me at all when I went to dance practice. Royce also said that his dad had been in a great mood too. Sparks were definitely flying between them. Our plan finally worked. Good job, sis. Uh huh? Was I really gonna be his stepsister? I should be happy with this outcome, right? But what was this uneasy feeling? One day at practice, I walked in on Daisy and Royce and immediately felt awkward, so I just rolled myself into a corner. Why did I react that way seeing them be so close? Is it possible that I've fallen for him? This can't be. We're gonna be family. There's no way this can happen. After that day, I tried to avoid Royce. Despite his new girl, he still bothered me, but I kept my distance. I was brooding all the way home until I heard my mom talking on the phone as I entered the house. And I'll bake you some pecan pie, darling. Wait a minute, Royce and his dad were both allergic to pecan, so who's she being all lovey-dovey with? The next day, as usual, I told my mom I'd go to practice, but actually lingered outside the house to stalk on mom. I saw her on the couch, video calling some strange man. Oh gosh, did my mom really cheat on Royce's dad? How could she? Still in shock, I glumly lurked to Graffiti Alley and spotted Royce and Daisy there. They seem to be talking about something really serious. So, you already knew? Yeah, ages ago. But it's clear that we can't just force love on someone. So, you mean to just give up and happily watch them see other people? Oh no, so they knew mom was unfaithful to Mr. Phillips already? How embarrassing. Right at that moment, Daisy spotted me, so I frantically ran away. After school the following day, Daisy wanted to talk with me in private. However, it was not about what happened yesterday. Do me a favor and stop hovering around Royce all the time, will you? But Royce is my friend. I can't just stop seeing him because you said so. If you like him, be my guest. Suddenly, Daisy fell to the ground. Ouch! Why did you push me? Huh? What is she doing? At that exact moment, Royce showed up and worriedly checked on her. Okay, now I know what's going on. Sorry about that. Let me give you a hand. When she was just about to stand up, I shoved her. Now you know what my real push feels like. I noticed Roy's stunned look, but just walked off. Now that I don't seem so great in his eyes anymore, he'll stop approaching me. 
Sweetie, what's wrong? What's wrong? This is all your fault! If you didn't cheat on Mr. Phillips, everything would be fine! What do you mean? Cheating on whom? <laughs> then my mom burst out laughing after I told her. Turns out they never dated. They both saw through our matchmaking plan early on, but decided to just be good friends. And the person I saw mom video calling with was her boyfriend, but she hadn't introduced him yet because they'd only started dating. But why set us up in the first place? Finally, I had the chance to tell her how I truly felt about being forced into her vintage world and not being able to pursue my love for street dancing. Mom was quiet for a second and then said, Gee, how silly I've been. I've been inspiring strangers to go after their dreams, but I stopped my own daughter from pursuing hers. I felt so much better after pouring my heart out. I also mentioned Royce's situation with his dad and she promised to talk to him about it. Hang on, this means... Mom, so you and Mr. Phillips are just friends, right? Immediately, I ran off to find Royce, as if on cue the doorbell rang and it was... Daisy! What game is she playing now? If she's here to mess around, come at me already. But surprisingly, Daisy apologized. I'm sorry, I was just blinded by jealousy. And there is nothing going on between me and Royce. He in fact already rejected me the day you saw us at the graffiti alley. Also, he asked me to give you this. I opened the box to see an adorable keychain with I love you on it. Oh my, is, is this a love confession? But there's also a note saying, I'm leaving for another city, till we meet again. No, no, no! I sprinted to his house right away. Oh lord, he's already packing! Without thinking, I hugged him and started sobbing. So, you read my message? Y yeah. And what do you think? I, I feel the same, but you're leaving for real? Then, his smile turned playful, and he admitted he was just messing with me. Turns out he was going away, but only for a few days, for a dance competition. Really? That's awesome! But I can't forgive you for tricking me yet. So, yeah. Although we couldn't get our parents together, us two actually became a couple, so our matchmaking scheme isn't a total failure, right? <laughs> we were even able to change a few things for the better. For instance, Mom spoke to Royce's dad and he agreed not to move for the time being so his son could settle in. Mom also promised to check in on him when his dad's away on business. As for our family, my mom no longer tried so hard to act like she's not living in 2023. She now sometimes includes modern elements in her vlogs as well, and I even become a regular <laughs> guest on her channel. Hey Beans, today my fiancé and I are baking this fab coconut cake, along with my daughter and her boyfriend. They are hip-hop dancers! Check out their channel if that's something you fancy! They're really the cat's pajamas! Here I am at a press conference, standing in front of countless reporters. Oh no no, that's not me! There you go! I'm Alexia, 17 years old. I may look like a high schooler, but unlike kids my age, I'm a bodyguard. How so? Well, I was adopted by an underground security organization after being abandoned at a young age. Thankfully, Papa, my savior, was around to teach me everything from math to martial arts. Honestly, it was the happiest time of my life. But he'd gone too soon due to cancer, and it's like I was abandoned again. Didn't leave me any time to grieve, the organization put me on training from dusk till dawn, saying I needed to make my Papa proud. So, I always tried my best and stayed on top at martial arts. However, due to my clumsiness, I ended up as just a bodyguard for VIPs with the codename 036. How boring. <sighs> Until one day, I was summoned by the boss. 036, we have a special task for you. His name is David Smith, principal of Woodford High School. Another dull escort, again. <sighs> You will investigate Mr. Smith for a financial regulation violation by disguising as a new student at Woodford and collect everything related to him, his wife, and daughter. So be extremely careful. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Finally, goodbye boring bodyguard job. Time to prove myself. I'll make Papa proud. And to be honest, I'm also excited to experience the life of a high schooler. Now, I needed to do some shopping. Since I only have suits to wear on duty, I didn't know how to dress like a real student. Oh wow, look at all these dazzling clothes! After a lot of contemplating, I decided to take this pretty dress. This thing, and also these. They're matching, right? But the saleswoman asked me if they were for my little sister. Huh? What does she mean? Then she picked out something else for me. I was about to try it on when a scream startled me. Help! 
thief! Help! Ugh, not a single day went by without trouble. I bolted in that direction and... Aha! Not today, thief! Are you crazy? I'm not the thief. Let me go. Just then, I heard a thud and saw another man in blue being tackled to the ground by two security guards, while a woman snatched the bag out of his hands. Oops, I just caught the wrong guy. I immediately released him. Turned out he was chasing the thief too, but no matter how much I apologized, he kept rambling that I was a violent lunatic and even suspected me of being an accomplice. This guy was unbelievable. He better wish he'd never see me again, else the next kick won't be a mistake. Today is my first day at school. My disguise was so good, even I couldn't recognize myself. There's no way I'd get caught. From now on, I'll go by the name Alexia. Much better than 036, isn't it? Wait, I know her. Bella Smith, one of my objects. <laughs> wow, the audacity of those girls to pick on their own principal's daughter. All right, Alexia's coming to your rescue. But not in my normal way. So, here comes a clumsy nerd who accidentally bumped into them, spilling coffee over them, buying time for the prey to run away. The mean girls let out horrified yelps, then yelled at me before running to the restroom. <laughs> then, I turned to see Bella talking to a boy. Oh no, it wasn't just any boy, it was that obnoxious jerk from the mall. What are the odds? Then, they headed toward me. While Bella kept thanking me, I caught a staring look from this guy. You seem familiar. Have we met before? No, no way. How's that possible? It's my first day here. Phew, he seemed not to recognize me. So he's Clark, Bella's best friend. Now how am I supposed to approach her when her company was this guy? <sighs> Anyways, my first class is about to start. Now excuse me, I have this perfect cover of a schoolgirl that I need to keep up. Newbie, tell me. Where was the American Declaration of Independence signed? Um, at the bottom of the paper, madam? <laughs> the whole class burst into laughter. How embarrassing! But how was I supposed to know? Papa didn't teach me this. Then suddenly, I heard this alarming sound. Don't panic. I'll handle this. Follow me to the hallway. But no one did. Instead, they laughed even louder. I was still dumbfounded when a nice girl told me it's just an end of class spell. Oh, that's what it was. Finally, a break from all those exhausting lessons. Now let's check if the food is safe. Okay, pass. I was about to eat the carrot. Then the mean girls from earlier appeared. Yes, eat it. That'll help your poor eyesight. And this is for staining my dress. Then they strutted off. Ugh. In other places, those folks would have known the taste of my fist. Hey, Alexia. Alexia. So noisy. This place is like a beehive. Alexia! Oh wait, that's my new name. I turned around to see Bella. She wanted to join me for lunch. Here comes the chance. But nope, the tag-along Clark is also here. Jeez. <sighs> I asked Bella why those mean girls teased her, the principal's daughter. But she just shook her head unknowingly. Hmm, but I think I've kind of figured out the reason after talking with her. I noticed that she was a bit slower than her peers, as when I cracked a joke, it took her a while to understand and laugh along. So, prying out information from her should be easy. If only... You've just moved here. How do you know she's the principal's daughter? Uh, uh, I heard from others. This party pooper. Jeez. <sighs> the first week didn't go too well, as I was still getting used to being called Alexia and not inspecting my own locker. Also, this load of homework? In general, I enjoy learning stuff at school, but the mission hasn't progressed one bit. I had to pick up the pace, so using the voice changer, I tricked Mr. Smith to leave his office, then sneaked in there. But suddenly, Bella came in. Panicking, I blurted out I was cleaning the desk for the principal. She seemed convinced and even joined me. Another time, I saw the principal talking to someone in the hallway and was about to take pictures with my spy camera pen when Clark appeared and bombarded me with stupid questions. Jesus Christ, if things carried on like this, when on earth would I finish my mission? One day, I spotted Bella in trouble with the mean girls again. Ugh, do these brats ever learn? This is too much. I need to settle this once and for all. So I ran over and quickly pulled Bella away, telling her to run. Then, I threw my famous flying kick, along with some front sweeps, and got all the meanies knocked on the ground in a blink. 
Justice served. <laughs> I dusted my hands together in triumph, but has Clark just witnessed everything? This guy was way too suspicious. He probably would ruin my secret mission someday. I need to look into this guy. And it didn't take long for me to find out he wasn't from a wealthy family like most of the other students. He got into this prestigious school on a scholarship for being brainy. Now here I was in Clark's family's bakery. Oh, this girl has his eyes and hair color. We talked and immediately clicked. She was Enola, Clark's sister. She has Down syndrome, but she's a real talent. Look, aren't her designs stunning? I was flipping through Enola's sketchbook when Clark suddenly showed up and dragged me outside. Why did you follow me here? I know you're up to something. Who is the suspicious one here? It's you who always coincidentally appears wherever I am. I only followed you here because you've been stalking me and looking shady. That got Clark speechless. Then his sister came to us saying, Uh, Alexia, Enola really likes playing with you. Brother, let her come inside. His attitude completely changed hearing that. He gently told me that other people often tease Enola because of her condition. He also apologized for misunderstanding me and offered me a free cinnamon swirl. Wasn't this the first time I'd seen him smile? I'd never been so close to him like this. And suddenly, I felt something turning in my stomach. Perhaps I'd eaten too much. <laughs> After that, our conflict was naturally settled. Me and Clark became closer and I got to know other aspects of him. He was really gentle and helpful. The more we talked, the more flutters I felt. Oh no, what's wrong with me? Worse still, I even started to feel uncomfortable when Bella was close to Clark. He always helps her with the smallest things, like opening the door, holding an umbrella for her, and even opening water bottles. She always overacted as if she wanted Clark to protect her all the time. No, get yourself together, Alexia. No, 036, you have a mission to do. So, I faked having period cramps to get out of PE and sneak into Mr. Smith's office again. I rummaged through the trash can, but there's nothing useful. Then I noticed a locked drawer. And guess what? There was a notepad and an envelope full of money. Then by shading the paper with a pencil, the letters gradually appeared. It's an address and a time. So the principal's going to make a transaction there? Got it. Then on the way out, I clumsily knocked over a pile of documents on his desk. Wait, there was a picture of a woman holding two babies with scribbles. I'll love you three forever. But Bella told me she was an only child. Then who's this? And here's that place, the middle of nowhere, exactly where something fishy would happen. 429, it's almost time. Someone's coming. Wait, it's the woman in that picture. She's older, but it's definitely her. And then Principal Smith appeared. They seemed really close. They'd been talking and he handed her an envelope. That envelope? So she was his. What now? Haven't given up on stalking others. Okay, listen carefully. I think Principal Smith is involved in a financial violation case. But not just that. I just got him two-timing. See? N no way. That's my... Okay, I will keep this secret for you on one condition. Let me join this investigation. The principal has been supportive of my scholarship. I don't think he's that type of person. What? He wanted to work with me? That sounded risky, but as long as I kept my mouth shut about the organization, I could spend some Bella-free time with him. Good, right? A few days later, Clark told me to meet him at a cafe to discuss the investigation. But it's been ages and he still hasn't shown up. Then out of nowhere, a beautiful cake was presented in front of my eyes. Oh my, it's Clark, singing happy birthday and even gave me a present. Birthday? I myself didn't know when my birthday was. Why he... And the cake, did he make it himself for me? Aw, he's so sweet. I got so emotional that I almost blurted out my feelings to him. But right at that moment, Bella, out of the blue, jumped in between us. Typical Bella. Never leave us alone. Turns out, she was actually the one to insist her dad let her see my student records and make my first birthday cake ever. Thank you guys. I've never had a birthday before because I have no... Uh, no, because my parents are always away. Then we should celebrate properly at your house. How about that? What? Why did he suggest that? But then Clark winked at me. Heh, seems like we had a plan. 
Arriving at her home, we were warmly greeted by Bella's parents. It was such a delicious home-cooked meal. So this was what it was like to have a family. Bella had this all the time? But poor her. She didn't know about her father's a cheater. <sighs> we were in the middle of dinner when Clark asked Mr. Smith about a science project he was doing. Then Clark winked at me again. That's my cue. So I excused myself to use the restroom, then sneaked into Mr. Smith's office. This pen was magical. Let's see what Bella's dear father was hiding. Oh, he withdrew the same amount of money each month. Yay! Today was a success! Thanks to Clark's clever plan, I would finally got something useful. Suddenly, our eyes met and he looked at me gently while leaning closer. I was ready for a kid when my boss called me. I did not assign this mission for you to play house with that criminal. You have three days, or else I'll have someone more capable taking care of this. Such a waste of your papa's expectation. Am I really that useless? Thinking I'd let papa down, I couldn't help but burst into tears. What happened? Who's that? Tell me, I'll handle him. Clark, it may sound weird, but I'm actually a spy. Uh, what? Clark was shocked, obviously, so we sat down on a bench and he blurted out everything to him. Clark didn't say a word and just gently held me in his arms, which made me feel so relieved. You may wonder why Bella and I were in this deserted place. The thing is, a few days after that call, my boss ordered me to bring Bella here to kidnap her and use the documents I gathered to blackmail the principal into resigning. I guess that could help me get rid of the third wheel Bella and have Clark all to myself, right? Oh, isn't that our school's vice president? So he was behind everything after all. Then suddenly, freeze, hands in the air. Oh my god, the police? Why were they here? Along with Mr. Smith and Clark? We're so doomed. Except it was my master plan. After receiving the text from my boss, I almost followed his order. But then, I remembered Papa's words. He always told me to never lose my moral compass and never harm others to achieve personal goals. Bella was a good person and shouldn't be punished for whatever her father did. I couldn't betray my first friend like that. So I told Clark and we set up a plan to find out who was behind all this. And here we are. The vice principal was revealed to have hired my organization to spy on the principal to overthrow him. And when he couldn't find any dirt on Mr. Smith, he turned to use Bella as a leverage against her father. How despicable. Also, I can't believe that the new boss led our organization down an evil path like that. But it's not the only truth revealed. But Principal Smith, how do you explain your monthly money withdrawal? I had a close friend who unfortunately passed away at a young age. He asked me to send his money to his illegitimate son and daughter, whom he'd kept a secret due to family pressure. So there's nothing more going on between you and my mom, right? Huh? What did his mother have to do with this? Turns out the woman he met up with the other day was Clark's mom. That means Clark and Enola were the kids in the picture? What a twist! In that case, thank you for taking care of my family all this time. How foolish of me to suspect you and mom, and even investigate you. My apologies. You… you investigated him before? Yes. Actually, it's not a coincidence that I caught you spying on him. Sorry for keeping secrets, but I knew with your impulsive nature, you'd jump to conclusions and approach my mom. Huh? Impulsive? That's how he saw me? Then he knew me pretty well. <laughs> Why is everything so confusing? Can you explain it to me? Did you befriend me just to investigate my dad? Bella, I'm so sorry for how things went down, but please believe me, our friendship is real. Fortunately, Bella was understanding, and we remained good friends. Oh, actually, good sisters, because the principal adopted me after I left the organization. <laughs> and I still visit the bakery often to hang out with Enola. Enola is so lucky to have a brother who takes care of her. I wish I could have one. No, sorry, I can't do that. Why? Because I'll take care of you in a different way. I dashed along the hallway, then skidded to a halt in front of the classroom door. Ah, I was late. Again. Miss Anderson, what's your excuse today? Morning, sir. <laughs> I'm sorry, but my spaniel hit my shoes, then I tripped over a package by my front door, then my heap of a junk car wouldn't start, and that's enough. Good God. Please sit down. Ashley already took attendance. 
What? So much for my perfectly crafted excuse. Mr. O'Shaughnessy totally would have let it slide, but she had to ruin it. I'm Ashley. I'm pretty, I'm perfect, everybody likes me. Well, no one likes teacher's pets, Ashley. Think I'm being too harsh on her? <laughs> Just ask anyone about Ashley Mae Anderson. Ashley's father's a vet with a Medal of Valor. They even had dinner with the president at the White House. For her sweet 16, she rented out the swankiest club downtown for an entire weekend. And David Guetta DJed. Ashley dated two college boys at the same time, and when they found out, things got physical. Okay, okay, maybe not all of that was true, but who cares? Look, the main character here is me. Hi, my name's Ashley Mae Anderson. I know, what a freaky coincidence, right? But that's the only thing we had in common. Because unlike popular Ashley, I'm just a normal teen who's just minding her own business. But then she transferred here and messed up everything. This happens every time I open my locker. And they're not addressed to me, but to Ashley. Jeez, why do boys go so cuckoo bananas over that pretentious princess? I gathered that whole cluster and dumped them on Ashley's desk. Here's your delivery for the day. Oh, I have no use for those things. You can keep them if you want. <laughs> How snobby. I know those rumors weren't all lies. Alright, if you said so. Being mistaken for Ashley was so annoying that I did consider putting a sign on my locker or something. But I suppose sometimes it actually had its perks. Like when I accidentally knocked over a trash can in the school's parking lot. But upon knowing my name, the janitor said my father was his commanding officer back in the day and let me off. And believe it or not, these mix-ups didn't only happen at school. Once, my family went out for dinner and the staff at this restaurant thought we were the other Andersons. They must be some really important people cause the super attentive waiters topped up our drinks for free and gave us complimentary desserts. Pretty sweet, right? Only when we were leaving, things almost went south when the manager shook my dad's hand and said, Thank you for your service. My dad seemed confused, but fortunately, I dragged him away before they busted us. I mean, Ashley's been enjoying these privileges her entire life, so it's fair I benefit a little from them. Especially since I have to endure being called her Walmart version. Anyway, back to me. I arrived home to find a teary-eyed girl sitting on her front porch. She must be one of Billy's exes. If your brother's a jock that all girls flock around, you'd get used to this real soon. He went through girlfriends quicker than hair gel, and he always had some peeves about them, like Mandy, too clingy, Katie, too dramatic, Maggie, too flirty. The list goes on. Then, as soon as my backpack hit the bedroom floor, my door burst open. Hey, I need your help. What? Need a hand to make up with Cry Barbie out there? She's ancient history. Check this out. Her name's Jane Brown. Ain't she a beaut? I immediately recognized her. She's the waitress that he kept eyeing the other day. Now, he needed my help to ask her out and not seem creepy. So, I suggested taking her to his friend Alexander's party this weekend. How do you know about that? Isn't that cool people exclusive? As if I wanted to. I was added to their group chat by accident because they thought I was Ashley. <laughs> right. Hot Ashley. You should come too. I'll be with Jane, but Victor will be there. Wait, I'll see my crush at that stupid party? Sign me up then! Jocks, cheerleaders, stuck-up kids. This place was packed with people like Billy. My brother briefly introduced me to the host Alexander, while Madison followed him around looking all shy and gooey-eyed. Wasn't she bothered that all Alexander seemed to care about was if anyone had seen Ashley? I also got to officially meet Jane, but the person I was looking for was Victor. He's so much more than just a cute face in the crowd. He's the peanut butter to my jelly. But before I could talk to him, a bunch of dudes popped out of nowhere. This is Ashley? Oh man, I thought she was supposed to be pretty. No offense though. She's a six if you squint hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm squinting now and you're barely even a two yourself. No offense though. What, what did, did you, you say? say? <laughs> Don't worry, you could still go after pretty girls. They just need a crate of fear first. The crowd suddenly felt silent and stared at us. This party is so lame. Peace out, losers. Anywhere is better than that stuffy elitist hellhole. But it's a bummer I didn't get to talk to Victor. 
He's Billy's best bro and used to come hang out at our place pretty much every day. But not anymore. Gus has been avoiding me ever since I told him I had feelings for him. <sighs> I was going to settle things with him tonight, but those jerks ruined it. Do I need to print my own t-shirt saying, I'm Ashley, you must be looking for Ashley? The next day, while looking for Victor, I heard someone calling my name. But I turned around only to see Alexander calling for, ugh, Ashley. So annoying. I saw him make a move on her, but she said guys like him bored her, then proceeded to list all his flaws. Oof, harsh. From then on, I tried my best to avoid Ashley, and thought my life would be light and breezy. But nope. On the contrary, I found myself in a series of unfortunate events. One day, a stack of religious magazines randomly showed up on our doorstep. But the real kicker was, they were all addressed specifically to me! And there was absolutely no way to convince my family and neighbors that I wasn't a member of the Church of Scientology. Two days later, all of my clean clothes had some weird stains and holes on them. I had to beg Billy to lend me some of his. That day, I went to school in an old jersey, looking like a midget. <sighs> Then, this Monday, I became the center of attention by showing up with my face covered in pimple patches and band-aids. Well, that's because I woke up to countless cystic acne and didn't have enough patches. This resulted in me being called the mummy for five days straight. But the final straw was my car having two flat tires! The clock was ticking, so I asked Billy to take me to school. However, he just flat out refused, saying he'd already promised to pick Jane up. No other choice, I had to ride my old bike. When I saw Billy's car in the driveway, my pettiness got the better of me, so I splashed my half-empty milk carton over the windshield. I'm on my way. Oh my god, you little brat! Sorry babe, you won't believe what my sister just did! Seeing Billy's reaction was chef's kiss. <laughs> you got it coming, big bro. The next day, my car was fixed, so I managed to get to school early. Looks like my string of bad luck was finally over. Okay, let's see who wants to confess to Queen Ashley today. From... Victor? Oh no, why him? I stood there, frozen with a letter in my hand, still processing the situation when a friend came and showed me something on her phone. It's a video of me singing and dancing in my room! No one's supposed to see this, ever! It had been uploaded by some throwaway account, but who else could it be but... Jesus Christ! Billy! I rushed home to see Billy and Jane cuddling in the living room. How's he still so calm after pulling that on me? I confronted him, and he didn't even bother denying it, and even said that's what I deserved for vandalizing his car. We screamed and shouted at each other, but before we ended up in a fistfight, he stopped and stumped off to his room. I was still fuming, glaring at his shadow, when I saw Jane gawping at me in delight. Don't blame your poor brother too much, dear. It was I who pulled the strings. What? Jane? But why? We'd barely even interacted. Then she went on about all of my mishaps lately were her doings. Yep, my so-called bad luck, it had been Jane all along. That's for stealing Alexander from my sister. He's her first love. Do you know how heartbroken Zoe has been? Wait, Zoe who? And why on earth would I choose to mingle with that playboy Alex? Kudos to this girl for thinking I could ever steal someone's boyfriend. Hello, I'm still struggling with my lifelong crush over here. I tried to tell her she made a mistake, but she wouldn't listen. Stop denying it. I know it's you. You're East High's Ashley with a vet dad. That checked all the boxes already. Hold up. There's another Ashley Mae Anderson in our school. She's Ashley with EY. I'm Ashley, E-I-G-H. Her dad is a war veteran. My father is a veterinarian. Oh, snap. Good lord. She devised this intricate plan, approached Billy just to make it work, and was successful for the most part. Well, apart from having the wrong person. Just amazing. Jane apologized and promised to take down the video. However, she wanted me to help her take revenge on Ashley in return. I didn't want to get involved, but I also never wanted to be on her bad side again, so I reluctantly agreed. But if you think about it, Jane's story didn't quite add up. Ashley seemed to have a holier-than-thou attitude and had dozens of admirers waiting in line. 
Why would she get in between them? Not to mention, Alexander's a notorious player who Ashley already ruthlessly rejected. I believe there's more to this. As expected, thanks to that video, my school life was now even more awkward than usual. But it didn't matter, as I was too preoccupied with Operation Ashley. Today's mission? Approach her after cheerleading practice. I stood in the corner behind the bleacher, waiting for my chance. But before I showed myself, I saw Madison march over, say something to Ashley, then storm off. After that, Ashley started sobbing? I didn't know what happened, but I felt bad for her. So I tried comforting her, but she kept brushing me off. Look, you can keep the Ice Queen act all you want, but I know you have feelings too. I thought you might have something else you want to share with me, not just the name. And it was like I pulled a lever that let out all of her bottled up emotions, and we had a heart to heart all afternoon. Just as I thought, things weren't what they seemed. We'd better talk this through with one another. So I set up a meeting at a cafe in the South Coast Plaza, as they wouldn't dare to cause a scene in public, right? Anyway, Ashley clarified that Alexander and her weren't a thing, while assuring Zoe that she deserved a guy much better than him. But Alex was really sweet to me. He gave me this present on our one month anniversary. Did he say it's his grandmother's? Yeah. He tried giving me an identical one on my birthday. I'd say you dodged a bullet when you two broke up. Please, look at yourself first. You two flirt with boys left and right and still act all high and mighty. Get off that high horse. Ashley seemed genuinely hurt by Jane's words that it took her a while to speak up. I'm just sick and tired of being the popular girl who has to live up to everyone's expectations. It's too exhausting. I thought transferring here would mean a fresh start, but everyone still has this impression of me which I can't seem to change. The rest of us looked at each other in confusion when we saw how sad Ashley's situation actually was. We didn't know there were so many downsides to being high school popular. Ashley, you know you can just be yourself, right? The world will have to accept you for who you truly are. If people don't like you, then so be it. Yeah, if they don't, that's their problem not yours. You can't fit into a mold to please everyone, cause there's no such thing. I don't want to agree with her, but she has a point. Let the whole world know the real Ashley. And you too, Zoe. Someday, you'll find a good guy who loves you for yourself. Alright girls, that's settled. Now, I have to deal with my own mess. Billy found out the truth and now he's been ghosting me. But I swear to god, I'm in love with this guy. Gotta go. Bye! I couldn't believe I was rooting for my saboteur and her accomplice to be together. But here I was. Go get him, tiger! The next Monday, Ashley walked to class and had lunch with me instead of Madison and her clique. And of course, this didn't go unnoticed. You left us for her? What is she? You're not hot, sister? <laughs> Before I could clap back, Ashley stood up and unleashed her inner sass. This is me living my life as my true self. If any of you bootlickers have something to say about that, you can shove it where the sun won't shine. Sweet Mary Jesus and Holy Spirits! Who knew she had it in her? Her words completely decimated those hyenas. And suddenly, someone grabbed my wrist. Victor? Slow down! Where are you taking me? Besides, you got the wrong person, and also the wrong address for this. You should give it to her yourself. Actually, I sent it to the right girl, but apparently, she still hasn't opened it. Wait... What? And you're right, I should tell her myself. It's just that Billy and I made a deal that sisters are off limits, so I thought it's better to avoid you. But hearing Ashley talk about being herself made me realize that I'm sick of hiding my feelings. I'm gonna make Billy see how sincere I am for you. Before I do that, Ashley, I like you, and um... Will you go on a date with me? Yes! Um, I mean, yeah, I suppose that would be cool. This is beyond my wildest dream! Not only do I have a brand new friend, but also a date with my dream guy. Fortune is finally smiling on me. <laughs> this school is so boring. All they do is talk nonsense and do nonsense things. Worse still, I feel like I can never escape them, as some of them live in the same neighborhood as me. 
But you know what the most annoying thing about my life is? That's Joy, my identical twin sister. In my parents' eyes, she's perfect. That's why she's the favorite child. Her allowance is more than mine and she gets to attend an elite private school while I'm stuck at the most boring school ever. How unfair! With a sulky face, I walked into my room whining. I think having identical daughters means our parents forgot that there's actually two of us. They've never picked me up from school. Don't be absurd. They just took me to collect my dress for the school gala. <laughs> a new dress for some fancy party. How terrible for you. I don't even want to go to the party. Trust a nerd like you not to appreciate what you have. If I were you, I'd make the most of every second of that elite school of yours. And if I were you, I would just enjoy my pressure-free life. We both <sighs> sighed and stared into a void thinking about our tiring lives. Then Joy suddenly turned to me. Oh my god, Jade! Do you want to be me? Go to my school, have my things, and attend the gala? What a brilliant idea! Why had we never thought of it before? I'd live her fancy life and she'd live my dull one. That's perfect! Wow, this school is enormous. I tried to keep my cool as I navigated the endless hallways in search of Joy's locker. Ah, found it. I spotted a group of girls waving me over. They must be Joy's besties, Ruth, Nora, and Nell. Unlike my boring sister, they looked very glam in their branded clothes. What a power group. Wherever we went, all eyes were on us. Students handed us snacks, saved places in the cafeteria line for us, and let us sit in the front row of the basketball match. These girls were so interesting. Bet I fit in with them way more than Joy did. Talking about Joy, she somehow loved my boring old-fashioned school. I'd never heard her chat that much in my life about how nice my friends were, how easy all the lessons were, and how cool the school bus was. Joy's friends were so much fun, and they did cool things. For instance, they always had shopping dates and bought each other expensive gifts without question. One time, Nora, the richest girl in the group, didn't hesitate in going into Kate Spade and buying the new release handbag for Ruth. I thought this was pretty awesome of Nora, but then something happened that made me question the group dynamics. Ruth told me that she liked the red velvet cupcakes at the bakery near my house, and she asked me to buy her some. I was happy to do it, but the next day, when I brought the cupcakes and told her the price, she burst out laughing. <laughs> Joy, my dear, I don't care how much they cost. That's your concern. Then she turned to Nora, showed her a picture of a cute but expensive skirt, and told her to order it for her. Hang on. Had she always been thinking it was acceptable to order us around like this? I don't understand why an innocent bookworm like my sister would hang around with this cunning clique. They don't study at all. During the test, while I was still randomly circling the answer, Ruth kept on kicking my chair and urging me to let her copy my work. And as soon as the teacher turned her back on us, she even snatched my answer sheet. Huh? What's with that attitude? I took a look around and saw both Nora and Nell were also copying another girl's paper against her will. Rude! After the test, Ruth came up to me, hissing. Have you forgotten our deal? Huh? Deal? What could it be? Well, I guess I would have to put up with Ruth for as long as I was Joy, so I could return everything to her in roughly the same condition after the gala. What I really should do now is just to enjoy this elite school life, right? So, I didn't join Ruth and her minions for lunch, but bought food from this super cool vending machine instead. They even had pizza! But, the machine made these weird sounds. Ugh, I think my food was stuck. So I kicked and tapped it. But it still didn't work! <laughs> you dare get into an altercation with the pizza machine? You must be starving. Oh. My. God, this basketball boy was the most handsome guy I'd ever seen in my life. I was too lost in his eyes to realize the dumb machine had finally delivered my lunch. This gorgeous guy then leaned towards me and my heart skipped. Oh Cupid, I wish I was the one he picked up instead of the pizza. Here you go. Right before I could react, someone snatched the tray and pushed me aside to enter between us. Thanks Hayden, wanna share lunch with me? <laughs> Excuse me? How could she steal both pizza and a boy from me? The boy took my pizza from her and said, Thanks, but I'd like to share this with this cute starving girl instead. 
all by the drinks. Wait, was he asking me? Then yes, 100% yes! Leaving a furious Ruth behind us, we walk to the bench table nearby. So, he's Hayden, the captain of the basketball team. We talked so much about our favorite comic books and even played basketball for a bit before classes. That was my best lunch ever. After school, I was about to leave when Ruth stopped me. Didn't anyone ever tell you not to mingle with Hayden? He's not wealthy. We have high standards about who deserves to be around us. Duh! Huh? She sure seemed to swoon over him earlier, but now that he'd turned her down, she decided he wasn't worthy? This girl's mindset really didn't sit well with me. As soon as I arrived home, I told Joy everything. You should listen to Ruth. Hayden must be bad news. I don't care what Ruth thinks. How come you do? Is it because of this deal you have with her? <sighs> Not your business, but stay away from Hayden. I don't want to get in trouble. Ugh, this vague hints were agitating me. What was it about? But whatever the deal between Joy and Ruth was, I wasn't going to let it get in the way of my blossoming romance with Hayden. Today, me and Hayden had arranged to meet at lunch again to play basketball. I excitedly walked out of art class just as the girl fell and dropped her painting set around my feet. I immediately picked them up for her, when all of a sudden, a boy's hand covered mine right before someone stamped their feet on our hands. It was Ruth! It was her who tripped up the poor girl too. She did all that on purpose to hurt me, but Hayden got there just in time to save the day. What do you think you're doing? Feeling too embarrassed being caught red-handed, Ruth couldn't do anything but give me a spiteful look before leaving. I couldn't believe that Hayden did that for me. His hand was swollen, but he just kept checking if my hand was okay. How can Ruth be so horrible? Because she knows everyone's ugly secrets, and she uses them to control people. Joy, she knows your secret too, right? No. Uh, um, I'm not sure, but I don't care. No matter what that secret is, she's gone too far. Don't worry, I got your back. So will I. Oh, I'm Katie, by the way. From then on, I no longer hung out with Ruth and her minions, but I kept quiet about this to Joy as I didn't want her freaking out and making us switch back places early. The more time I spent with Hayden, the more I found myself liking him. I wanted to confess to him who I really am, but I can't. At least not yet anyway. <sighs> Katie is really nice to me too, and she introduced me to her super sweet friends. Everything was just perfect, except my grades. Well, I didn't dare to tell Joy about this either. My study was pretty bad, and it literally ruined Joy's straight-A record. Meanwhile, Ruth, time after time, insisted that I was the one who had to do all her homework, research, and tests. But, duh, I couldn't even finish mine. You know what I've got. Yeah? What exactly is that you have? What's all the threat about? Ruth was stunned seeing me talking back at her like that. Yep, that was it. I've had enough. After class, she waited at my locker and signaled me to follow her to the equipment room. Finally, I could know what my secret was. Ruth showed me a video on her phone of Joy sneakily checking her notes during an examination. Was she <gasps> cheating? If our principal sees this, I'm sure your precious scholarship will be long gone. And what about that excellent student title of yours? So Ruth was using this to manipulate Joy. Does she do the same to everyone else? Do you think this would scare me? I don't think. I know. You don't want to lose everything, right? <laughs> no, Ruth. It's you who's gonna lose. Do whatever you want with that clip, like I care. And so, I walked away, leaving a fuming Ruth behind. To be honest, I was a bit scared. Well, I know scores and things like academic transcripts were so important to Joy. What if I destroyed it all? After my last class of the day, the thing that I feared the most came upon me. The principal called me to her office and showed me the video that proved that I cheated on a math exam. She was so disappointed in my horrible grades recently, she even asked if it was because I was too caught up in my dating life and the bad influence I called friends. But how am I supposed to tell her that it was just my own incompetence? Nothing to do with Joy or Hayden or my new friends. I just reached my room door when I heard mom scolding Joy. The principal must have called her. It was all my fault. When mom left the room, I could feel how angry and frustrated mom was. Joy, I'm so sorry. 
I couldn't let Ruth have this hold over me. Um, I mean you anymore. I waited for Joy to take it out on me, but to my surprise, she was kinda happy. <laughs> That's okay. I think I should thank you for that. I've never been brave enough to stand up for myself, although I was so tired of getting picked on all the time. I was so scared, but turns out being scolded by mom isn't as bad as I thought. <laughs> My homeroom teacher also called me, but she only gave me a warning and told me not to make the same mistake again. I've never felt this at ease before, Jade. I'm not the perfect Joy anymore. Then, Joy told me about the pressure she felt to be perfect. One time, she even got sick before the math test due to studying too much. Not having enough decent revision and being afraid of getting a bad grade, Joy cheated and was caught and recorded by Ruth as evidence. We finally understood each other and decided to teach Ruth a lesson to stop manipulating and taking advantage of others. We spied on Ruth and secretly recorded her. And guess what? <gasps> Turned out she was not as wealthy as she always pretended to be. All the brand names she had were from the poor victims that she called friends. I also filmed Ruth forcing the top students to do homework and essays for the rich kids while she just sat idly to collect money. I was so ready to post these videos online, but Joy stopped me. She told me if we did this, we were just as bad as Ruth. Instead, she had a better idea. She sent the videos to Ruth and demanded her to delete all of the student's secrets. In exchange, we would delete all of hers. Ruth, of course, had no choice but to obey. Wow, how mature my sister is. My last day in Joy's life has arrived. I'm just gonna make the most of it before I hand the reins back to my sister. Honestly, I kinda miss my normal school and my friends. But what about Hayden? Will he still wanna know me when he finds out I lied to him? I was looking around for Hayden when I saw some mean girls mocking Ruth for wearing a dress cheaper than theirs. So I walked straight up to them and whispered into their ears that I knew all their dirty secrets and they couldn't do anything else but storm off. Ruth gave me a coy look, mumbled a thank you, and then left. At that moment, a warm hand <gasps> gently clasped mine. Hayden! Wow, you're so cool. I... I'm not that cool, Hayden. Actually, I am... I have something I have to tell you. I then told him everything. From how I swapped identities with my twin sister, to how I ruined her school life because of my childishness. You didn't ruin anything. Actually, you made things much better. So, since the pizza vending machine day till now, it has always been you, not Joy, right? Yeah, it's been me all along. <laughs> That's all I needed to know. Then he pulled me in for the best kiss ever. Ah, why is he always late? I've been waiting for my boyfriend Kevin for the last half an hour. I craned my head to see if he was coming, but the only people around were a cuddling couple. I watched the guy kiss his girlfriend on the cheek, then led her over to the Porsche parked nearby. Oh wow, if only… But wait, that guy… Oh my god, it's Kevin! Thanks for the gift, babe. But wouldn't this Gucci wallet look even more perfect with a pair of Briani pants? You jerk! I shouted as I threw the cake I was holding at his shocked face. To the surprise of the new girlfriend, he immediately denied knowing me and made out I must be crazy. What? However, once the girl got in the car, he turned to me. We're done. You may have a pretty face, but you're just some poor little orphan. What? what did he just say? Poor little orphan? I trusted him. I loved him. But it turns out he was just a lying, cheating gold digger. My heart ached through this betrayal, but I still had to drag myself to work. Oh, I forgot to mention, I'm Linda. I've lived at this orphanage since I was little, and my job is to take care of the vegetable garden. Hmm, if only one day a king would appear, tell me I was the long-lost princess, then take me back to his magnificent kingdom. <sighs> I was just putting on my gloves when a nun rushed over to me. Oh no, busted. I was gonna get nagged for being late. But to my surprise, she smiled as she handed me a piece of paper. Oh my god, I can't believe it! I've been adopted! Curious, I flipped the paper and checked my adopter's information. Huh? Their year of birth was only 2000? I was eager to read more, but the nun took the paper back. I must have misread it. No way my adopter is barely older than me. The nun pointed to the gate. A Mercedes was there with a bodyguard in black. Next to him was a woman wearing a long skirt, a mask, and sunglasses. Is that the person who adopted me? 
Am I finally going to be a rich mistress living in the big castle with my millionaire parents? Well, yep. I'm now sitting in this expensive car with my adoptive mother. I was so excited. But the whole ride, she didn't say a word. And this weirdness continued until we stopped in front of this incredible mansion. As soon as we entered the place, a maid hurried over and bowed to us. Only then did my foster mother turn to me, take off her sunglasses and say, Hi Martha, welcome to your new home, my daughter. Oh, she sounds so young. So she must really be born in 2000. But this girl who's just my sister's age just called me daughter? That's so weird. This definitely would take some getting used to. Then mom told the chauffeur to start the car as it was time for my makeover. Wow, another car? Huh? Isn't that a limousine? This was insane! And boom, here I am at a luxury beauty salon. I didn't know what half of these shimmering, expensive looking products were. I let the beautician do her thing and boom again. When I opened my eyes, a stranger stared back at me. Wow, with his curly blonde hair and layers of makeup, I looked at least five years older. Oh man, goodbye my cool blue streaks. Before I could complain, my new mom handed me an outfit. Wait, wait, what is this? This dress is super tight and short. I feel like an Egyptian mummy in it. As for these high heels, ugh, how could anyone walk straight in these things? But seeing my mother's satisfied eyes, I tried to force a smile. I'm a noble lady now, and this is just how we dress, right? Finally, dinner time. I used to think that places like this only existed on TV. Oh, look at these numbers. One meal here costs more than our monthly expenses at the orphanage. Wow, it didn't take long until the waiter brought out these fancy looking dishes. But mom's still wearing a mask? I was about to ask when she ordered a portion to go, then told me to just eat and she would wait for me. Why though? This was so awkward. Why was she so insistent on keeping her mask? But that's not the only strange thing. Today, I returned to school. Still the same old school, but mom insisted this muscular bodyguard accompanied me everywhere. I couldn't even go to the restroom in peace as he stood guard outside. It's great I've been adopted and all, but I can't carry on being controlled like this. It's so embarrassing. I have to negotiate with mom. So I made her some squash soup to break the ice. I knocked on her door a few times, but no response. So I opened it, intending to leave the bowl on her table when suddenly someone held my wrist. It was mom! She looked at me with scary eyes. How dare you enter my room without permission? Where are your manners? I made some soup for you and... I forbid you from entering my room again. I will not repeat myself on this. Okay, jeez. Why was she so sensitive about it? I wonder what she was hiding there. So, that was a failure, and I still have this living statue following me everywhere. It's lunchtime, yet thanks to him, no one would ever sit with me. I needed to escape him before his presence suffocated me. What should I do? Finally, after overhearing some students mention that the vending machine had run out of orange juice, I immediately asked the bodyguard to get some for me. Ha! <laughs> I'm sure he won't find any even if he dug up this whole school. <laughs> Success! <laughs> How great it is not being supervised by that giant rock of a guard. I was in the field joyfully chatting with two of my friends, but I didn't even get to finish my story before the bodyguard showed up again. Great, now you've scared my friends off. There he goes again, being all silent and still. Ugh, this was so annoying. I need to set up a date to apologize to my friends about that incident. And of course, we have to finish the gossip we were talking about. But... How could I possibly avoid my bodyguard? Aha! I just sneaked out of the kitchen's back door, and there's only this fence left between me and freedom. Oh no, the stupid alert system! The bodyguard was rushing toward me, but thankfully, I made it through. <laughs> but then... Oh snap. Before I could process what was going on, mom was glaring at me and gave the guard an order. Take her back to her room! Immediately! As soon as I was tossed back into my room, mom started yelling. What is this rag you're wearing? Maids, throw this ghastly clothes away at once. From now on, you'll only wear what I allow you to. And you must not go outside without my permission. Is that clear? Then she slammed the door shut. What? 
Why was she being so unreasonable? I couldn't live like this. I needed to talk to her. I barged into her room but didn't see her anywhere. I took a look around and noticed a picture of a girl. But why does she look exactly like me? Who is this person? What's happening here? Mom angrily sprinted towards me and grabbed the photo frame. I tried to take it back and as we were pulling about, I quickly took a chance and snatched her mask. Surprisingly, her wig also came off. Oh my god, Martha looks exactly like me! Except, there's a mark on the side of her face. Martha, what's going on? It took a while for her to calm down and tell me everything. Turns out she was due to marry her dream man, but then she was diagnosed with hypochromia, a condition that affects red blood cells and can result in skin pigmentation. She worried if her fiancé found out, he would cancel the wedding. Then, she found a picture of me that my orphanage posted on their fan page. Stunned by how similar we looked, she came up with the idea of asking me to replace her on her big day. What? How dare she use me like a tool? I was about to leave, but then she got on her knees and started sobbing. Please help me. I must marry him. Then, you can go home. I, I have lots of money. You can have as much as you want. Please, this marriage is everything to me. I'm truly in love with him. Ugh, Martha looked so pathetic. I couldn't leave her alone miserable like this, so I agreed to help her. She then shared her Instagram account with me so I could contact her fiancé. So, I went on a first date with this man called Elias, wearing a Bluetooth headset connected to Martha's. Five minutes had passed and he hadn't noticed I was a fake. That was a little strange, huh? Uh, is there something on my face? Why are you staring at me like that? Oh, sorry. It's just you look even more appetizing than this beefsteak. <laughs> and you're far prettier than the last time we met, Maddie. Every time I set eyes on you, I feel myself blossoming. Ugh, I know. It was a cheese fest. But hey, I was just doing my part here. Then suddenly, Elias sighed and gave me this sad look. My dad is seriously ill and is in the hospital. Right now, we're in a very difficult financial situation. At this rate, I don't know if the wedding will go as planned. So, it would be great if you could help me. Yes, yes, of course. I will help you. Don't worry. Oh boy, what a simp Martha is. As soon as I delivered the line, Elias immediately got up and said he must go to the hospital to take care of his dad, leaving the bill to me. Hmm, something about all this seems fishy to me. The next day, I waited for Elias at a cafe. He was late and rushed in, looking all flustered. Honey, did you wait long? You have the money, don't you? I gave Elias the bank card and a small gift box. I wanted to cheer you up, so here's a little something extra. Yeah, Martha had begged me to deliver this gift box to him by hand, saying that his family situation must have stressed him out tons, so she wanted to comfort him. <sighs> what a rich people thing to do. Oh, a Rolex! Pumpkin, thank you. This watch will surely go well with a Valentino shirt. What a pity I don't have one yet. Huh. <sighs> Wait, I think I'd heard this somewhere before. Oh my god, he sounded exactly like that douchebag Kevin. Was he just using Martha for her money? I decided to pry further and find out. Is your dad better? I would like to visit him. Which hospital is he in? Elias looked confused. He fidgeted with his watch, unable to meet my gaze. Uh, um, my dad's fine. You really don't need to visit him. So you don't have to worry about the hospital bills anymore, right? Oh, no, no, no. I haven't paid his bills yet. I can't... <laughs> I'm just kidding. Of course, it's yours. <laughs> now I'm sure he's no different than my gold-digging ex. I couldn't let this guy continue to take advantage of Martha. I went home and told her right away, but she refused to believe me. Stop talking nonsense. Now, take this cake to him at once. He must be so exhausted after looking after his sick dad. This would be a sweet surprise for him. I struggled to carry the huge cake to Elias's house. Then I saw him standing there arguing with another girl. I should have broken up with you a long time ago. My fiancé is much richer than you. I'm begging you, please, change your mind. The girl cried and pulled Elias's hand, but he just swung his arm and got into the car. Ugh, that jerk Elias! He's treating these girls as hard like they're his playthings. I have to stop this. The big day has come already. But before walking down that aisle, I need to get one thing done first. What do you think about this look, huh? I took a selfie and sent it to Elias to see his reaction. 
Right at that moment, Martha rushed into the room. What on earth do you think you're doing? Just leave it alone, and we'll have a great show for you to see. Suddenly, I received a message from Elias. Darling, you're as beautiful on the inside as you are on the outside. The love I feel for you is indescribable, and I can't wait to call you my wife. Wow, give this guy an Oscar! See? <laughs> oh, really? Then let me show you something even more interesting. Right at that moment, I received another text. Okay, that's my cue to act. I signaled Martha to stay quiet and dragged her over to the window. We took a peek outside and that's when someone appeared. As I walked up the aisle, I heard gasps from everyone. Geez, had they never seen a pigmentation mark before? But Elias gently smiled at me. Well, let's see how long he can keep up the act. It was my turn to read the oath when Martha furiously barged in. Elias, you're a liar! The wedding's off! What? Wait, Martha? But why are there two of you? The whole crowd was in an uproar. Drop the act! I already know you're only marrying me for my money. Money you plan on granting to another girl! No, Maddie, I love you! Right at that moment, a girl stepped out of the crowd. Pfft, you truly believe I'd ever get back with you? Not in your dreams. All eyes stopped on the pathetic, panic-stricken Elias. <laughs> Take that, you lying gold digger! Oh, the girl looks familiar, right? She's Ruby, Elias's ex. On that day, I followed Ruby and told her everything about Elias' gold digger ways. Then, we came up with a plan to expose him. Ruby would come to the wedding and beg for him back. And as expected, after seeing a picture of me with a flawed face, he immediately agreed to get back with Ruby. And of course, I purposefully let Martha overhear the conversation. Brilliant! Now, Elias is currently being removed by Martha's bodyguards. <laughs> Serves him right. So, what happened next? Well, Martha told me about her past. Her parents both passed away and left her a huge fortune. She may have had wealth, but she was lonely, which is why she acted impulsively around Elias. We both learned that love is precious, and it's also worth the wait for someone who loves us unconditionally. Martha let me stay here in her mansion, and we've actually become really close. It turns out we both have found something way better than fake love from slimy gold diggers, and that's sisterly love. This view of the Alps is magnificent. Wow, I've never felt this free before. <sighs> huh? Hang on, are those meowing sounds that I'm hearing? I followed the sounds to the raging river nearby, and there, stuck on a rock in the middle of it, was a terrified cat. Oh no, poor baby, I've gotta help it. I quickly grabbed onto the nearby tree, then leaned out towards the rock with an opened umbrella on the other hand for the cat to jump onto. The cat hesitated for a bit before making the lead, but it's heavier than I expected. I lost my balance and tumbled into the river. I grabbed the cat just in time, but the strong current made it impossible to float. In a panic, I screamed for help, but the waves lapped over me and gulps of water filled my mouth. And just like that, I felt my surroundings darken. Ugh, what was this wet, scratchy thing rubbing on my face? I opened my eyes to see that cat sitting on me Thank goodness it was okay, but where am I? This seemed like some kind of rustic cottage house? Suddenly, a man walked into the room with a food tray. H who are you? Relax, I'm the one who jumped into the river to rescue you both. Turns out, he happened to pass by the river while we were swallowed by the current, and he didn't hesitate to jump in to save us, then brought us back to his home. Oh, um, thank you for everything. Sure. Here, eat up. So, how come you and Topaz fell into the waterway? Who? Oh, you mean the cat? How come you know his name? It says it right here. See? I'm guessing this is not your cat then? I told him how I accidentally found Topaz, so its family must live around here somewhere. Hearing this, he agreed to help me find Topaz's owner the next day. He even gave me his bed for the night, then walked out saying he'd sleep on the couch. But as a guest, I couldn't let him do that, so I just grabbed the blanket and went to sit next to him. You have a cool tattoo there. Kinda looks like a mini Mars, right? Nah, it's my birthmark. The only thing my parents left me. Hans then told me that he grew up not having a clue who his parents were or why they abandoned him. At 18, he moved out of his foster home and came here to become an herbalist. <sighs> I felt so bad for him, and in a way, 
I could relate. Being alone is difficult, but having both mom and dad won't guarantee your happiness. I was born into a well-off family with both of my parents, but the thing was, they only got together due to an arranged marriage, and they have resented each other ever since. My house always felt so cold and empty, and I hated staying there. So, as soon as I graduated high school, I took a gap year to travel the world. Actually, Switzerland is my first stop. Gotta say, it's nice to have someone to talk to like this. I guess Hans felt the same way by this look he gave me. He seemed very touched. The next morning, we took Topaz to the town to ask around. Turned out, today was their annual festival, so a horde of people crammed along the street to celebrate and watch the parade. Hans held my hand so I didn't get lost, but somehow the crowd still pulled me away and I ended up stuck among these sweaty people. Suddenly, a hand grabbed mine and led me out of there. Phew, thank God, I couldn't breathe in there. And you know what? A super handsome, stylish guy was standing in front of me. Are you okay? That's when I noticed the tail of my shirt was ripped. Freaked out, I tried to cover it up, so he took out a silk scarf and tied it around my waist. For a second there, I froze to the spot, so amazed by his thoughtfulness. Just at that moment, my phone buzzed with a call from Hans. He told me to meet him at the fountain. Um, slight problem? I had no idea where that was. Well, lucky me. This gallant guy offered to take me there. We talked along the way, and I found out his name's Willard. He lives in a nearby town and was here for the festival. I told him I came to find the owner of the lost cat I'd found. Then, when I showed him the picture of Topaz, he couldn't hide his shock. Are you sure this is the cat you found? I nodded. He stayed silent for a while, then said, I might know its owner, but I gotta go now. Bring the cat to meet me there. Faye, it was nice meeting you. Then he bowed down to kiss the back of my hand before he left. How sweet. I watched as he disappeared into the crowd. Thanks to Topaz, I got the chance to meet him again. Uh, why are you making that funny face? I told him about my encounter with Willard and convinced him to come with me to the address on the handkerchief. He seemed skeptical at first, <sighs> but then gave in. I mean, other than this, we had no clue. It was worth a shot, right? The next day, we went to the place Willard told us, but seriously, is this right? Why were there a line of people all holding near on identical cats to Topaz? They even had the same collar as him. What is going on? I walked over to ask an old man sitting on a bench. He told me the millionaire lady who lives here had lost her dearest cat, Topaz. People said his name was on the top of her inheritance list and she promised to greatly reward anyone who safely returned him, so these frauds were trying to deceive the owner by bringing some Topaz look-alike here. But Madame Primrose is no fool. Huh? Madame Primrose? The iconic designer and president of Wisteria Fashion Corp? That's right. Oh my god! I immediately dragged Hans to stand in the line. You see, my childhood dream was to become a fashion designer, and, of course, the one I admired the most was none other than Madame Primrose! Ah! One of the reasons I came to Switzerland was to find her and hopefully become her apprentice. And now look, what are the odds? Finally, it was our turn, but... I'm gonna have to stop you right there. All right, everyone, listen up. Madame Primrose won't accept any toe passes from now on, as she's tired of your deceit. So, disperse. What? We didn't just wait half a day here for nothing. Fine, I'll find another way to get in. We then walked around the mansion and found its side gate. Then, just when we were climbing over it, a maid caught us. But she didn't make a fuss out of it. Instead, she seemed a bit flirty towards Hans. Ooh, I had an idea. There's our chance. You go and charm her. He seemed confused at first, but then got the point. Hey, I think you're really cute. Hans then <laughs> tried his best at flirting, and as soon as she swooned, I asked her to help us return Topaz to his owner. The maid hesitated at first, but when we said that we didn't need to be repaid or anything, she agreed to let us in. We quickly split up to find Madame Primrose. I wandered the maze-like hallways, then I suddenly bumped into someone. Mind your way! Wait, I don't know you. What are you doing here? I, uh, um... She's my new friend. Is there a problem? I'm sorry, young master. It was Willard. He came to rescue me again. 
great to see you again, young Master Willard. You live here? Why didn't you call me when you arrived? Did you bring the cat? Where is it? Give it to me right now! Willard, calm down! Topaz is safe! I just found out his owner is Madame Primrose and- I'm her grandson! Just give the cat to me now! His agitated behavior didn't seem right. I took a few steps back from him, refused to do what he said, then ran. You don't understand! Just at that moment, Hans and Madame Primrose appeared. There you are. Are you okay? He worriedly asked. But boy, all I could see right now was Madame Primrose! She approached me, held my hand, and repeatedly thanked me for risking my life to rescue Topaz. This was amazing, but... Hmm, but why did Willard just leave without saying anything? Madame Primrose invited us to stay for dinner that evening. Joining us were Willard and his mom, Agnetta. Madame then told me how much Topaz meant to her. Twenty years ago, she lost her son, Mr. Alvarez, to a car accident. Then, a year later, her grandson Leroy disappeared. Her grief was almost unbearable, but then she was gifted a cat, Topaz, and thanks to him, she began to heal. I tried comforting her by saying she still had Willard, her other amazing grandson with an excellent fashion sense inherited from his grandma. But to my surprise, Madame Primrose said Willard isn't her real grandson since Agnetta is actually Mr. Alvarez's second wife and was a stepmom to the missing grandson, Leroy, and Willard was her son with her ex-husband. I could see Willard and his mom were feeling so uncomfortable. Willard must have felt so hurt as Madame Primrose never even thought of him as a family member. Then my train of thought was interrupted by Hans. Ugh, why didn't he just tell me to pass him the salt instead of sticking his right arm to my face like this? Suddenly, Agnetta gave him a mortified look and spilled wine all over the table. Mom, are you okay? She didn't reply, but just left. I could tell it was because she saw Hans's birthmark. What could this be? Has she no manners? She must be unwell. I'll go check on her. So I followed her to the garden gazebo. That's where I heard her talking to someone on the phone. You had one simple job. Take that pampered Moggy miles away. Well... Guess what? It came back. I gasped in shock, and right then, a hand covered my mouth. Shh. Be quiet. Oh, but it gets worse. The stupid cat brought Leroy, the missing grandson, home. That's right. I saw that Mars birthmark with my own eyes. If Primrose finds out about this, we're done. You hear me? Wait, so Leroy, Madame Primrose's only grandchild, is actually Hans. Uh, and... His stepmom was the one who secretly gave him away in the first place. Even worse, I was hearing the shocking news with her son. Willard, get it together. Do you know anything about her plan? I knew mom was behind Topaz going missing. That's why I tried to take the cat away earlier, to keep him safe from her. But, but Leroy too? That was just heartless. What should I do now? She's my mom after all. I could see his pure and kind soul being tormented, and my heart <clears throat> ached for him. I know it must be hard, but you need to tell Madame Primrose the truth and make things right. That's a way to help your mom redeem herself, okay? He stared at me with those dreamy eyes of his, and I felt my heart turn to mush. But a phone call from Hans interrupted us. He was looking for me, saying we gotta go. Right, I had to tell him the truth. In a cab back to Hans's cottage, I told him everything, and he just burst out laughing, saying, <laughs> I'm Leroy, the heir of a millionaire. Oh, please. <laughs> I'm serious. You were brought to the foster home exactly 19 years ago, and you both have this one-of-a-kind birthmark. Okay, so what if I'm really her grandson? I don't even know her, and I'm definitely not rich kid material. You've been lonely your entire life. This is your chance to find the family you've always wanted. Hans was speechless. It seemed I'd hit his weak spot, and he finally agreed. We asked the driver to take us back to the mansion. But no one was awake at that hour except a gardener. He led us to a library deep into the mansion, brought out tea, and told us to wait. Just a few minutes later, Hans started coughing, and his face swelled up. Oh no, he must have been allergic to something in the tea! Panicked, I screamed for help, and the gardener came back and carried Hans to the car. But then, a hand muzzled me from behind, and everything went dark! I woke up with my head pounding and unable to move. As I tried to make sense of the situation, I realized I was tied to a chair, mouth taped, surrounded by some rusty, unsanitary medical tools, and 
On the other side of the room, Hans was unconscious and tied to a patient's bed. Standing next to him was Agneta and the gardener and a guy in a blouse with some kinds of tools in his hand <laughs> about to do something to Hans's birthmark. I tried to scream and struggled to break free, but I couldn't move an inch. Right at that moment, Willard barged in. Stop this. Leave right now or I'll call the cops for your unlicensed business. And mom, I already know everything, so please have some remorse. Agneta looked so ashamed of herself. Willard, everything I did, I did it for you. Please understand. You saw how that old hag Primrose treated me. I was so miserable. Then your dad offered to help me. Dad? You mean Tim? How can he be my dad? Don't be such a wimp, son. I stayed and worked here like a servant just to be close to you. We did all this so you can be the only heir. You deserve that. Now, finish it. I... I can't, Tim. Get away from my mom, you dirtbag. You never cared about me. You only moved here to manipulate her to do your dirty work. A terrible person like you will never be my dad. Then I'll do it. As he was about to lay hands on Hans, suddenly there was a meowing sound and Topaz appeared, followed by Madame Primrose. Step away from my grandson. You dared to live under my roof all this time and play foul tricks on my family? Take him away. Luckily, Hans came round and he had a tearful reunion with his grandma. They finally had the closure they deserved. Hans decided to stay in the mansion with his long lost family. He's even planted an herbal garden there for treating and healing people, as he always wished. Madame Primrose had finally found peace, as now she had both her beloved grandson and precious cat back. She also thought that maybe she'd been too strict on Agneta, so she decided not to press any charges against her. Agneta had also apologized, but she felt too full of shame to stay and decided to move out of the mansion. Willard followed his mom and helped her start a new life. What about me? Well, I got the thing I've always dreamt of, to be Madame Primrose's apprentice. That's her gift to me for bringing both her cat and her grandson back. And right now, I'm late for a date with a very special guy. Can you guess who it is? <laughs> <laughs>